Good morning. Welcome to Sewing Quarter. I'm Natasha McCarthy. You've got me for the next four hours and the very fabulous Lucy Brennan. She's here. Oh no, have you given yourself a paper cut already? We've got freezer paper. Be careful, it's sharp uh, on the show this morning. Um, do you want to see how we're going to use it? Let's see what's coming up. So 8am, quilting and applique masterclass with Lucy. Oh yes. So this is a very, we've been, do you know what, we have been asking for this, uh, you, me, all of us have been asking for this for quite some time, and here it is, Lucy's expertise in the wonderful world of applique. Um, and then, must have tools for your quilting at 9am, and then at 10am we've got our Hexy Kisses quilt with Lucy Brennan. So many of you have been asking about that quilt that we've had behind us all week. Where is it? Where can we get it? Where, all will be revealed at 10 a.m. And then at 11 a.m. we've got our traditional quilting fabrics. This will possibly be the very last time to see the Devon County fabrics. We've got some lovely books on there uh, and also other fabrics that really work well with that traditional feel. That's what we love. Now, let's have a look at the quilt that we're talking about. The quilt in question has been hanging up behind us. We've had so many questions about this quilt. Well, today all will be revealed and if you love your English paper piecing, you definitely need to tune in on that hour. Yes, producer Hannah, you do, you do. Uh, now this hour is all about our applique, um, so we will get onto that in just one moment. But first, we love it when you get in touch and here's how you do so. Head to our website, which is www.sewingquarter.com and then you can watch live, it's all in HD on the website. So for those of you that can't get it anywhere else, we're there. We're still there. And then if you scroll down to the right is a message, the studio box. That will come straight through to producer Hannah. And the, oh, there you go. And then if you wanted to send in any pictures, then uh, there's a little sneaky peek for you there. So, <laughs> studio at sevenquarter.com is how you do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, Oh, hello, in the message in the message box. You might want to, you know, expand on that, but that's that's all producer Hannah's feeling like saying this morning. Um, and then that's all of yesterday's shows. That's about to go and replaced is going to be everything from today's show. So if you are searching a product that you've seen on the show, that is where to find it, underneath where you can watch us live. Um, so like, yes, now, as we were saying, if you want to send in your photos, I'd like to see some uh, applique and... English paper piecing this morning. That's what I would really like to see. Then at studio at sewingquarter.com. And obviously, if you are sending in photos, we're kind of assuming it's okay to show them on air. One day, I'd love to get that Tony Hart music as well. Do you remember that when he used to have the gallery? Oh, I love that program. Art, was it Art Attack? With, with, with Morph, the little, the little plasticine figure. Anyway, uh, we digress. Now, this morning... We've got various bundles for you, so all will become clear. Uh, what we're starting off with, though, are some applique bundles. So for Lucy, this is Lucy's flower basket. So you get the template. Here we go. I don't know if we can see this. Might be a bit white for us early in the morning. There we go. So you've got your flowers there. You've got your basket. Perfect project for Easter, actually. Nice. And then we've got fabric. So a half a meter of each of these. Uh, do you know what? This is just a very pretty array of fabrics. So you've got your cornflower blue, and then you've got baby blue. You've got flamingo, and then you've also latte and nude. There we go. So we've got those for you, and that's half a meter of each. So you've got two and a half meters. Hang on, what? Two and a half meters of fabric and an applique template for $16.99. Hey, happy days. That's awesome. Ooh, like that. Oh, this is producer Hannah's favorite one. Oh, I can see why you like it. We were talking the other day, weren't we, producer Hannah, about how greens and purples work beautifully together. And hey, presto, look at that. Oh, this is your, you could do this as your tulip, your tulip bowl. Have your tulips not come up in the garden yet? Uh, well, you know, soon. Soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully your, your, your tulip situation will resolve itself. Um, we have got mauve mist, spearmint, lime green, oh, yes, lemon, 
an antique white. That's all in there. And again, you've got your template for Lucy's um, beautiful flower basket there. All Macau, 100% cotton, 44 inches, selvage to selvage. Yes. Now, we're going to have a look at that applique in the first part of the show. We also have a bundle with freezer paper. We'll look at freezer paper separately in just one moment. But we're going to show you how to use freezer paper. Freezer paper is one of those things that really fascinates me. It's up there with sticky back plastic. Um, so many different ways to use it. And, um, you know, the fact that it's a crafty project, in fact, and using it in quilting, but you can also wrap your meat in it, and it's even got, you know, how long you can keep things frozen for on here, which is very useful. Um, but it also, you can use it in your arts and crafts, and also, it says here, keep your house mess free. <laughs> they haven't seen my house, have they? Uh, I think it needs a bit more than freezer paper. But in the bundle, you've got your freezer paper, and look at this, this is perfect for your quilty needs. Look at these. It's um, basically, it's a bit like a, a series of nesting templates. It looks bizarre, but Lucy's going to demystify it all. And once we start using it, you are going to absolutely love it. Now, um, $5.99 is a fabulous price for your templates and also your freezer paper. Am I right in thinking that freezer paper isn't that easy to find in this country? I kind of have a thing that it's quite an American thing. But, um, you know... In a, in a quilting shop, you might find it, but not sort of like, you know, your corner shop. Um, so here it is. If you just like your freezer paper, just, you know, on its own. Do you know what? This is actually great. If you've got kids and they like to make a mess when they paint, just pull a strip off, put it down on your table, and then you can just, yeah. Uh, so $4.99 for your freezer paper there. So if you would like to grab yourself some of that, and you will use and use and use it, then that's just $4.99. There we go. Lu I'm going to bring this over to Lucy. I'm just cutting some up. You're just cutting some, you know. I am. Barely, just because you don't care. You don't care, do you? Just cut it all up. <laughs> Hello, I'm you. Just cutting away. Now, Mwah. first thing to mention, obviously, this is a paper, so paper cuts, be careful. Yes, it's not actually the paper. It was the metal. Oh, do you know, there's even a warning on there yes. that it's sharp. Yes, well, I didn't read the warning. Let me read it to you. Which was silly. Caution, cutting edge is sharp. Yes. Avoid contact. It's sharp, avoid contact. I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with looking at a plaster on my finger. Because <laughs> you did not avoid contact. Because I did not avoid contact <laughs> and had a bit of a scene just to clean up. Oh, there we go. So, there we go. But you're but okay. Fine. Yeah, no, oh, no, there I'm we totally go. Now, what totally are you doing? Fine. So, I'm just... Now we know that you're okay. My last shape. There we go. Hurrah. Now I can focus. Um, I love freezer paper. I love it. Um, Why? Because it, it opens up I mean, it's a made new you sing. world of, yes, opportunity. Um, and uh, there's so many different things that you can, that you can do with it. I love applique. I love hand sewing. Absolutely love it. But it's also a fabulous tool for quilting. Okay. So what I want to show you today is how the different, some are just a couple of different ways really that you can use the freezer paper, but then give you a few ideas for quilting patterns. Nice. So I think that's something fun to do because so often we're making the quilt, you know, yes. uh, quilts, but it is nice to actually see some quilting and, and give people easy options for quilting as well, or just different ideas that they may not have thought of. Well, that's what we're here to do, inspire. Yes. Uh, now, you're getting 50 square foot of it's this. Loads. <laughs> it's quite a lot, isn't it? <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. Um, I bought a roll of it several years ago. and Still it's, going? Yeah, it's still going. I've got loads of it. So it will last you a good long time. Excellent. Depending on how much you're using it. You may decide to use it for every project after this. Who knows? Now, how do we start then with this? Okay, so... Um, are we going to go applique or quilting to start? I'm going to start with applique. Oh, nice. Okay. So you've got um, some templates in the bundles, and this is um, fabulous. So uh, one of the team have drawn this up, and I requested that we have different sizes of the same shape. Was this shape. Adele? It was, was Adele. Was this lovely it was Adele? Lovely Thank Adele you, Adele. Has drawn this up, um, and this is really, really useful. So you can use these for applique, and you can use them for quilting. Now, we've called this our quilting bundle. So you've also got the, the bundles with the fabric, but this comes with the freezer paper and the template. Yes. Good to go. Yeah. 
So that's so, everything you need. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. the fabric bundles have got the flower basket template, and this has got the... So you could buy both, and you haven't doubled up on anything. In fact, happy mm -hmm. days, you've got even more to play with. Absolutely, yeah. And there's those are lovely spring colours in those yeah. bundles as well. Really so this nice. is the one that we're going to use right now with the freezer paper. Excellent. So, oh, and then, hang on, let's just yeah. show the other one. Producer Hannah wants to show us so yes. everything. Yes. Yes, here we go. <laughs> so the next one is your spring basket bundle, and that's got your greens and your purples. It's a lovely one, this, isn't it? So there are a lot of shapes on there that you can use to make flowers, nice. petals, leaves. And that's just that sixteen kind of ninety nine for two and a half metres of yeah. fabric and, and a template. Lovely. And nice. it's just nice to be able to play around, isn't it? You yeah. can make your own scenes with that template. Oh, we love to make a scene. Yes, I love to make a yes. scene. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, where should we start? Okay, so um, using, the, and it's this going to be the same for both templates. I have used a shape from the other template, but I've just got this one um, today. So I'm using both, but I just have this one um, here. So you just decide which shape you want to use mm -hmm. and which size you're going for. Um, and then you're tracing it onto the freezer paper. So I'm going to very carefully, caution. minding my fingers, caution. and yep. the very sharp metal. It's not like, um, you know, other things that come on a roll that you might have in the kitchen that have paper serrations, you know, card yeah, serrations. Yeah, yeah. This is proper metal This one. is actual metal serrations. So be please do be very careful. Just running along, I'm not going to touch it, running along the edge there, a little metal teeth so be very careful of that and of course you can use that to tear and it does make it yeah. easy to tear but I'm just gonna go with scissors let's for be now. cautious let's be cautious yes, now hang cautious. on the thing with freezer paper because this was what I wasn't quite sure on with it um, is that there's one side that's a little bit glossy mm -hmm. and then there's the other side that's papery and it's very very easy to tell the difference so the okay. um, sort of plastic coated side is very shiny and then you've got your matte, you know, you can feel it as well. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. It's not waxy, but it, it's sort of not plasticky in a very hard way, but it's... So when I put this down on the kitchen table for Freddie and I put a little bit of sellotape in the corners... Yes, other bits of tape, tape is available, in the corners, yeah. um, Then uh, it's the shiny side up so that nothing soaks through and it doesn't get a mess all over the place. Yes. Do you know, I'd never actually thought of that. I'm going to be using up my freezer paper now. Well, do you I? know what it says? Look, keep your yes. house mess-free, line drawers... Shelves, Ooh, counters, yes. or lay down to protect work surfaces. You could get the kids to do a drawing and then put it in the drawers. Oh, nice. Couldn't you? Yeah, because I've run out of wall space for all of his pictures. <laughs> he, he has his own dedicated well. uh, cork board and it's full. So all you're going to do then is trace the pattern. So you can see through the paper. Um, it's not difficult. And the plastic coating doesn't mean that you can't... <laughs> I'm now, saying you can see. There's the star. There it is. <laughs> you um, might not be able to see, but we can see. At can't home, we? you will be able to yeah, see. You'll be the able camera's to see obviously um, struggling a little bit with that this morning. Geraldine, she says, hi, ladies. Just leaving to go to the NEC with my friend Helen. Oh. So we'll have to watch the show later, recording it on Sky. Have a great day. Love, Geraldine. Geraldine, enjoy the Thank show. Thank you, Geraldine. John's there today and tomorrow, and then I'm there at the weekend. We can see the star. There we go. Oh, no. It's gone again. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, there. Again. Just about there. But yeah, it's very easy to see. Um, with your eyes. So then you're going to, to trace it right. onto the paper. Now with something like the start, you can use your ruler as well. Oh, so if you so want that your really, lines are yeah. really, really straight. Um, same then with the hexagon. Then stars then, we've done that. No, same with the hexagon shape. And then the heart and the um, teardrop shape, you can, you know, just trace it. You know, actually fine. these are really handy ones if you're working with felt and things like that as well, aren't mm -hmm. they? You know, sometimes I like to layer up different colours of felt, you know, especially if I'm doing yeah. crafts with the little one, then it's it's always nice to, to do that kind of thing as well. Absolutely. Uh, now, Lynn in Surrey says, good morning, lovely ladies. I have the freezer paper. Just love it. Uh, it's never been anywhere uh, near my kitchen. It says Lynn. Hasn't with mine, I No, no, no. You see, Americans, they love to wrap all their sandwiches and stuff in it, don't they? Yes, Whack they stuff do. in the freezer in it, hence the name freezer but paper. And do they put tape on it? How do well, they, they do it? string. Oh, string. Yeah. No, then my kids won't be able to get out the sandwiches open. <laughs> well, it'll be a lesson. It'll in be knots. a lesson in knots. Yeah, yeah. that make amazing <laughs> sailors. Um, the other thing I just want to say is, if you are tracing and you're worried about, you know, you're not very neat, maybe at, at drawing or, um, you're always going to be straighter with the scissors. 
Oh, okay. So when it comes time to well, I guess cut... it's a straight blade, isn't yes, it? Yes, when you're going to cut it out of the paper. So don't worry if your pencil line isn't completely accurate because it, it more likely will be when you, when you come to cut it out. Okay. So that's just something to bear in mind. So that's do all that. you need to do. So yep. do that. And I've already cut out some of the shapes. I'm going to put that back in carefully. I don't Thank trust you. you. No, I'd appreciate you doing that for me. <laughs> Oh, it's just terrible. It is sharp, isn't it? Yeah, it's only going to happen Caution. on television, isn't it? Caution. So um, I've just brought some fabric um, with me. So sorry it wasn't coordinated, but, you know, it is what it is. So you just it's, use the prettier you know <laughs> spring fabrics. This is still from our Macau range. It's still it is, the same yes. quality yes, it cotton. Is. It's just a different shade. That's it. Yeah. So we've bundled the spring and, uh, and the other ones. And they're looking good. I've changed my mind. I'm going oh, to do good, pink because I'm going to go with a heart. Whereas Lucy, you're just using it with stash, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. There you go. So yes. I just grabbed the ones that were on the top of the pile. So what I'm going to be doing is um, applique to begin with. Right. So what I want to do is just, I'm going to just roughly um, cut this out. So I'm just cutting a slightly larger... Um, piece out. Now you can do it two ways. You can do it this way, which is probably slightly more wasteful, or you can iron it on and then cut it out directly from your larger yeah, piece of this fabric. This is where freezer paper astounds me because you can iron it. Yes, you can iron it. It's marvelous. You want to iron one. it then? Want don't to you? iron it? <laughs> that pregnant it's all right. pause. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. Uh, here we go. Let me. Uh, Get you a little ironing mat Thank and everything. You. Now we've got our um, we've got our little iron on the show today. I don't know if you can see that because I've just so managed cute. to. There we go. We can't iron onto our iron onto our mats, by the way, because and don't at no, home don't. either. Never iron onto your your cutting mat because you'll warp and wobble it. You don't want to do that. No. Now um, we've got the the little the my, the small yet mighty, and it doesn't take a lot. You know, you're just running it over. For how long? That's it. No, just literally, oh, just run it over. That's okay. it. It doesn't. It's not like interfacing where you have to hold it down right. for a certain amount of time. You just and you can. You know, you can actually. That's the one thing you can actually iron it. properly, properly iron, iron it. it. Uh, yeah. Because this um, this little line here. Firstly, it looks like a mouse, which always <laughs> so cute. without actually being a mouse. And that, did I tell you about our mouth? I'll talk, tell you about our mouth oh, okay. later. Um, and so it's got a little nose there, and that lets you know when it's up to temperature. This is a steam iron. Now, how many little yeah, craft irons do you get that are proper steam? And you can adjust the temperature and everything. It's fab. And then when you're done, you just wrap that around there, and the plug just slots into there. Very well ergonomically designed. And also, if you suffer with ham fatigue, it's not heavy. No, it's not. Or anything not. like that. It's really easy to hold. It's grip. And then if you want to, just with your hand, you can press down on the steam function. I won't in here in case I set off all the alarms. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can do that. Great travel iron as yes. well. You know, a lot of our guests, obviously, you come down and you stay in a, in a gorgeous yeah. hotel. I do. <laughs> and, uh, and so... Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and it doesn't always have an iron. It's not doesn't. necessarily kitted out, you know, in full no. luxury. Um, so an iron is obviously an optional extra. So actually bring something like that in it. Yeah. And then it's, it's not taking up very much room. And I love that you can wrap the cord around it like that. Yeah. Because very often they don't even have that, you know, and you're just yeah. left with this bulky with, to, cord. To go, well, what do I do with that? And, and I just it comes... that in with the zip of my suitcase when I've got something that's got a long annoying, cord. It? Really and annoying. it comes in a little pouch as well. And it's even got a little water bottle -y thing to fill it up. Nice. Mm, of everything. Yeah, so um, with moments, and this is now attached to that. Is that permanent? That's not permanently attached, is no, it? No, 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 it's, temp it's temporary. Okay. You, just pe you just peel it back. Okay. I'll do it in a minute. All right. Um, so now I'm going to cut this out with a seam allowance. So I want a quarter of an inch seam allowance right. around the outside. Are you just going to eyeball that? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're not comfortable eyeballing, just... I mean, just do eyeball, actually. I don't, who has time for drawing? Well, no, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> you this might is a want busy to, working mum. Yeah, you might want to, <laughs> to draw it round, but you don't need to be really accurate. That's no what I'm gonna saying. No one's going to come and so, measure to make sure no, that you No, nobody's going to come inch. and measure. And you're better going slightly larger than uh, too little, because you get yeah. yourself in trouble if you go too, okay. too little. So just about a quarter of an it's inch. It's a life lesson. Always better to be more generous. Yes. 
There you go. Absolutely. Oh, that's nice, Natasha. Well, you know. Uh, oh, Laurie's uh, got in touch. She said, morning, girls. I love this, girls. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Uh, lovely to see your smiley faces. Oh, you wouldn't have said that half an hour ago with no makeup on. Uh, I'm American. Ah, excellent. Grew up with freezer paper. All the meat in freezer wrapped in it. Off to the NEC, four hour drive. Drive carefully. Oh, Suffolk yeah, to yeah. NEC, it's a long old haul, isn't it? Yeah. That's dedication. Um, yeah, you see, grew up with freezer paper. Okay, so Laurie, was it all string tied just before you get in the car? Was it all string tied or did you put a bit of tape on it? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I, you that's know, what I want yeah. to know. I'm so intrigued by it. You see, obviously, we, we just have Tupperware and cling film. <laughs> it's where everything goes in our freezer in. <laughs> cling film. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to um, just trim a bit of this one off Why to not? use as my background. Um, and I'm going to be hand sewing. And, and I've just got some purple thread. So that's what I'm going with. Now, okay. obviously, when you're appliqueing, you want to use um, the same colour thread as your um, fabric. Do I? So, yes. Why? What if I wanted to make it a statement? Well, you could, it depends what kind of stitch you're doing, but if we're going to try and um, keep it invisible. Oh, okay, okay. Then so you we're not going in with the, a blanket stitch the or same anything? Color. No. So I'm just going to grab a needle. Now, Lucy, talking of threads. Yes. Purple or otherwise. <gasps> We've got your favorite on the show. I, know, I love. I love Aurifil. Now, um, we've got three different packs of Aurifil. Lucy, why do you love Aurifil? Um, I love it because, I'm going to wait to knot because I want to show you the knot. Um, I love it because it's a strong thread. It's a really um, well-made thread. So it doesn't give off a lot of lint like a lot of thread does. It's strong, but it is cotton. It's 100% yes, cotton, isn't 100 it? 100% cotton. Yes, the colours are beautiful. It has... Not a sheen as such, but it's not completely flat like some cottons okay. are. Yeah. Um, but that'll be the lack of lint on it as well. Because yes. obviously the more sort of fluff on a thread, the yes. more it detracts. Do you want Absolutely. to see these colours? Look at the... I mean, this is just beautiful. So this, this is your tulip pink dandelion. Now you get 10 in here. They're 50 weight. Oh! <gasps> yes. Those are so my colours. I love that. Now, these can be used in your machine. You can also hand a plique. Lovely for quilters. So if you are someone that, uh, that decides that, do you know what? Cotton is the way to go with your quilt. If you've worked all in cotton and you've got sort of a cotton wadding, then maybe you want to sew in cotton as well. Um, I, I asked one of the thread manufacturers why you would work with a cotton thread as opposed to an all-purpose polyester with quilting. And they mm. said that polyester is so much stronger yeah that it actually you can end up ripping your fabric rather than your stitch and that they would rather repair a stitch than the fabric. That is I was actually, like, oh, that's it's interesting. It's actually happened to me. Oh, no. Yeah, true, it's actually true happened that. to me. That's true why I don't, I don't like using polyester. Now, look at this one. This is another Tula one. This one is your... Hang on. Can't open it. Doesn't, it's shy. <laughs> <laughs> ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Woo! Yes. Oh, look at those. Oh, now that would work beautifully with the um, with the spring flower fabricy bundle thing. The That's other thing gorgeous. is because um, there is a lot of thread on those spools. It's two hundred meters. Yeah, it's a lot of thread. Yeah. So I love using Aurifil for quilting because my well, I use it for piecing and for quilting, but it um, you're not having to um, wind so many bobbins. Ah. Because it lasts so long, you get more thread on your on bobbin. It. Oh, they've got it in yards, 220 yards, which is 200 metres. Producer Hannah, has, she's like the orophil queen. I love that artwork on yeah. these as well. Isn't it Look beautiful? Do you know what? You know, threads are one of those things that we all need, and good quality threads <gasps> are, are a, they, a joy and a delight. They last such a long time. I can, I can do a quilt, a, a quilt using that size of spool you know, and with other types of thread, I might be worried that I wouldn't have enough. And I have so much left over, and it astounds Why me did you every worry? single time, yeah. But you see, the other beauty of this is that, you know, if I was to give you a gift, and you'd said, I'd really like some thread. Mm. No. But actually, this is a beautiful gift. Yeah, beautiful. Really lovely. So yeah. maybe, you know, Easter gifts, maybe you don't do the whole chocolate thing. Maybe you've got someone that, you know, doesn't like chocolate or is trying to lose weight. That's the worst thing, isn't it, Easter, when you're trying mm. to lose weight and someone buys you 
Easter eggs. So, Matt, you know, rather have a, kit, a, little, a little something. Yeah, and that, I mean, because that's like a rainbow, isn't it? In that yeah, one, so. that's happiness in a box, that is. Look it at that. It is. Yeah. So whether you're using it for your applique, for well, actually any kind of sewing, yeah. it's perfect. I mean, that would be a, a lovely gift for somebody who was just starting doing some applique because you've got all of those yes. colours there. And the 50 weight is excellent for hand applique or machine um, because it's fine and strong, but it helps you keep those stitches invisible. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Just, you know, thinking. Very nice. Just, you know... It just occurred to me. Yeah. 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Okay, so I'm just very quickly going to show you a knot. So this is a, a quilter's knot that I was taught by my friend Claire. Um, and this Claire. is how I knot everything all the time. Now, this is not brilliant because I'm using a dark thread to help you see when I'm quilting, but could you hold up a piece of paper behind it? Yes. I know it sounds really silly, but it's no, it's no good if people can't see. You just gave me another electric shock. <laughs> Lucy, what's going on? Sorry. You're electric. I'm so electric. Okay, so um, I've got, this is the needle here, and this is the end of my thread, so the tail of my thread. Excuse the plaster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch the end of the thread with my fingers that are holding the needle, Yeah. okay? And then I'm gonna wrap the thread around the needle. So I've got the tail pinched between my fingers, and I've wrapped the thread around the needle, okay? Like then I'm gonna hold it show. with my fingers. So yeah. I'm holding where it's wrapped yeah. with those fingers. And then I'm just going to, and I'm not holding it too tight now because you've okay. got to get it off the needle. I'm gonna go all the way down the thread. Whee! And then as I get to the end, yeah. I'm just gonna pull. I'm gonna squeeze my fingers, Yeah. okay? And that's going to make a knot. Perfect knot. Hey, thank you, you Claire. Thank you, Claire. There you go. Watch that back on YouTube. So, um, I'm going to do the heart, and I'm okay. going to show you. Um, I, I want to sh just show you how to get round. You know this edge and this. Ah, uh, yeah. And now you see, tip. as soon as you start doing anything curvy, yes, can cause problems. Yeah. So all I'm going to do is clip really quite close in okay. to, the, to the heart there. Now half of this stock has gone of the freezer paper and the freezer paper and the templates. Good for you, well done. Wait until you see me quilt with it. <laughs> then you'll it's go crazy. So good. <laughs> okay, um, so this is one method of freezer um, paper applique. I'm gonna show you another method um, in a minute. But this is, this is really nice for um, sort of just a guide. Okay. Okay. So we're not really um, we're not really doing anything too magical with the freezer paper here. Okay. It's just going to be a guide. Oh, so I'm just going to put a pin in there. Right. Well, it's just not. It's a nice guide to have. So okay. if you don't want to, if you've got some fabric that you might not want to mark. Okay. You don't want to put pencil on it. It might be a very fine fabric. It might be that it's a lighter colour and you're worried, yes. you, you know, about Or you might have had a nasty it. incident with a, with, a, with a fabric pen. There's one of our ladies that watches that I'm particularly thinking of with a light fabric and a blue pen that mm. didn't actually that didn't wash actually out. didn't actually wash out, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it Not might be us. something like that, that where you don't, want to, you don't want to draw on it. And in which case, the freezer paper is excellent as a method to use as a guide without having to draw a line. Okay. So that paper is just going to stay on there and I'm going to sew all the way around. Okay? okay. So to begin with, so this is like need, it, you know, I'm doing needle turn applique, but to begin with, I'm just going to fold the fabric under with my fingers. Oh, okay. Like okay. It's not what I thought was about to happen. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good, fine. That's good so that. I'm using the freezer paper on top. Right. Okay. And this is not something that everybody does. Right. But is it a Brennan special? No, no, no. Right. It's not. It just is another way of, of using the freezer paper. Okay. So I've just come out literally on the edge of the fold yeah. to where I've tucked that fabric under. And then I'm going to stitch to the back. So through going through the back. Yeah. Okay. And coming out again on the fold. Right. Like that. 
Right. Okay, and I'm just going to keep going. So I, I can use my needle to help pull the fabric under is and I'm using the paper on top yeah. to guide me. So this is needle turn applique then, presumably, this because is you're using your applique. needle to turn. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, lovely. Yeah. So now you can. I'm a rule breaker, right? You, you are a sewing rebel. You can still, you can use your fingers if you give yourself enough room. So finger turn applique. Got, yeah, so you can just use your fingers to help you. But the needle comes in really handy any time you've got a little bit of bulk. See that there? Yeah. Or like a fold. And you just use your needle to, to kind of iron that out. So this is like when Janice does her dressmaking. She's always got her stitch and picker there ready to iron out any creases as she sews. It's yes. sort of the same but exactly. finer. Yes, with a needle. Now, the needle I'm using isn't the finest needle in the world. And, of course, I would not be using a dark thread. I'm just doing this for the, you know, so that you... you can see at home. I'm quite enjoying the pink, purple and green combo. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we do have hand needles actually. Oh, and a message from Anne. Um, hello Anne in Cheshire. She says, hi ladies, girls, friends. I think you've covered most, most eventualities there. Thank you, there. Yeah. Uh, lovely to have you to watch on this miserable morning. Mm. Love Orophil. Uh, thank you Anne. It is fabulous. Yes. Oh, and Erica's emailed in as well this morning. She says, morning gals. Morning. She says that she's very glad that we've got Aurifil spread threads. She says yeah. they're lovely, smooth, and with a slight sheen. Yeah, that's they do yeah. have just ever so slightly. There are there are other cottons, and they're just so flat yeah. that it doesn't bring any life. You know, it doesn't bring any life to your project, and especially when you're quilting, you want you want your quilting yes. to to shine. Of that's, course, that's you what do. you want. It's not shiny. It's not. A metallic thread no, or it's anything, not you know. Gaudy, is it? No, no, it's no, just not at quality. all. It, you just can see that that is a beautifully made thread. It's like a healthy thread. It's like when a dog's got a nice shiny coat and, yeah. and bright eyes. It's like that in yeah. thread form. And I, te I teach uh, quilting classes with a lady called Alison, and um, Morning, Alison. she always says, "Hi, Alison." She always says, "You know, you've you've spent that much on your fabric." You've spent all that time doing a project. Yeah. Why, in the final stages, would you not use a quality thread to hold that work together? And it's She's so right. true. She is right. I think it's one of those things that when you can get thread, you know, really cheap threads, it, it's sort of tempting to go, well, what's the difference in a thread? But there really is. And even really I, is. you know, and it's not to say, it, you're, you, you are getting what you paid for. Yeah. And when I started doing applique, I bought really, really cheap, really cheap you know, often, yep, sight. Um, so I would have a big selection of colour. Yes. Okay, because you're wanting to match in with yes. your fabric. So, um, I, so I had a big selection of, of colour. And unfortunately, I've had to give them all away. Because once I started using Aurifil, I realised they're horrible. They break in my machine constantly. I'm not, this is truthful. They constantly were breaking in my machine. When I was stitching, they, they weren't, you know, running through smoothly, and they were, and um, they were so thick. Even though they were deemed as a fine thread, they weren't. You still could see all that, all that stitching. And when you've spent all that time, you're doing all that work. You want it to be to be the best it can be. So. Well, you've sold it to me. If you want to look at our our complete range of colours, then there there's a complete range of colour on the website. We've got quite quite a, a lovely array yeah. actually there, and it is, it is one of those things that. I think because it's you don't necessarily want your stitching to be seen necessarily, mm. um, especially if you're if you're new to quilting and, and you've done other you know for me I, I've done all sorts of other sewing not necessarily quilting so it was a matter of actually if I'm not even going to see it why would I spend the money on but like you say it's actually you do get what you pay for yeah. and I mean don't get me wrong polyester thread absolutely serves a purpose and yeah. it's and it's great like you say for for other sewing projects. Fantastic. Like and you can use son. it in, yeah, you can <laughs> use it in quilting. And I know some quilters who only use polyester thread. Yeah. You know, they love polyester thread. So I'm not saying that you can't use it. My personal preference is to use Aurifil, but. Do take a look at the colours. In the meantime, just be aware that we have less than 10 of the freezer paper and applique bundle. Going crazy for it this morning. 
Uh, we have freezer paper on its own, but if you want it with, the, um, with all the templates, which is perfect. It's only a pound more, 5 99 now, we are nearly at that point where we have more of you with it in baskets than we have stock. Please check out your baskets. Make sure that you get it. You'll, Don't be, miss out you'll on be glad that you did. Yeah. You will be glad that you did. Um, I've got hand, hand needles here as well. Yes. Just very quickly, if you need hand needles, we've always got them, but, you know, sometimes you might not think to look. £1.49. I mean, the thing is, I, I never remember which ones of my needles are which. So, actually... Handy to have them just in a packet that clearly says what they are. Yes. And it's nice to have a range of sizes as well. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm coming to this point, so I'm just going to show you. So I've skipped a bit, okay? Okay. Which you wouldn't no, do. Fine. No. So just no. ignore that. So I'm just coming up to this point, so I just want to show you. You can see very clearly there where it's been cut, yeah. okay? So I'm coming down to this point. Now, how you want to do the point is up to you. If, if you're worried about that it might tear or whatever, you can go a bit more gently and you'll have a little bit, you know, rounded. But if you want to go right up to the point, all you're going to do is tuck the fabric under as much as you can mm. and where that point is, come out a bit further in. So just a couple okay. of threads sort of inwards. A couple of threads in. So I am going to make my point slightly bigger than where that um, paper is at the moment and then tuck the fabric under and bring your stitch back down. Ah. I didn't go far enough in there because I've, I might need to do that again. So you can, if you don't go in enough the first time around, you can go Yeah, back you in. can go in again. You just want to be careful because of where you've cut it, but you can just tuck. See, I've just got a little bits of thread there, so I'm just gonna tuck that back under. Again, using my needle yeah. and tucking that under. So we're getting all the raw edge of the fabric nicely underneath. So I then you can to go wash back this later, can't stitch. you? And it's yes. not going to unravel. Yeah. Because you've got all those little loose threads just under there. And then I'm just going to pull that to get that to tuck under. Okay. And I'm going to do another stitch there where that thread is coming out. And I'm using my needle all the time to just tuck. To manipulate and tuck, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. And, that, and then the, those stitches can hold that thread down. Oh, nice. Okay. It's almost like it's working like an over edge stitch, isn't it? To yes. just stop that, that thread from yeah. coming out and fraying. And then this, I'm going to use my fingers here, but you, you come to that point there and then you just pull that back and you do the same on this side. Where that raw edge is, you're just going to tuck it under, not at the right Now angle, you say it's... Using the edge of your needle. See, like that. Oh, yeah. it pops back like you say, You say it like it's a bad thing to use your fingers, but, you know, you've, you've done sort of the, the majority with your fingers, and, but then the actual fine bit, the bit that really counts, is yes. done with that needle. Yeah, and then you just come in again, and again I'm going to come in sort of underneath the paper. Yeah. A few stitches away, and it's going to be that stitch that holds... that's going to hold that... Um, those threads underneath. Now, Lucy, so again, just tucking, we don't have much and more time on this one. Oh, okay, okay. It's okay. already 22. <gasps> I know. What? Where did the time go? Okay, I'm going to show you the other way of preparing with freezer paper. Right. But I'm not. I won't sew it because you've okay. seen me sew. So that's um, the general. Hang principle. on. How do I take that yes. off? Oh, so it hasn't damaged the fabric around it. That's no, magic. No, nothing. Nothing there. Oh, that's but brilliant. it helps stabilise yeah. as well oh, as yeah, you've you're got stitching. Something. So you've got you've that guide. And you've just got a guide. Perfect. Okay. okay, good. So quick, 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 quick. And then I can quilt. Okay. In fact, I'll use the rest of this. There you go. Oh, Marcia's ours. Hello, Marcia. Lucy. Yes. How do you store your freezer paper? Because hers has lost its stickiness. Oh, I get. Can I just keep it in the um, in the box? Okay. And it hasn't and it hasn't lost its stickiness at all. You can't reuse it. You right. can reuse it maybe a couple of times, but it once it's been stuck down, it won't um, re yeah. re adhere. Yeah. If anybody else has got any tips then for Marcia, I yeah. mean, if, if anybody else has had this happen, has Laurie left yet? Because Laurie seems to be our. Uh, I would. I mean, all I would, you know. I'll freeze a paper Keep it in a dark, dry place. I'm not, I'm not too sure. I'm sorry. 
Oh, oh, I just oh. keep it in its box. Hey, now, we we're just talking about Laurie, who knows, who's American and knows about freezer paper. Yes. She says that they have special freezer paper tape in America. Not for your freezer. sewing, obviously, oh, right. but, you know, for your sandwiches. And you mean... Yes, I thought they would just use string. No, honestly, the... the uh, no, oh, no, I'm no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm totally joking. <laughs> because on the... On, this is new packaging. On the old packaging, where they tied up all their <laughs> where meat... Where people had time they, to get They did it with string. string. On the last lot of packaging, no. it had it all tied that would with be string. Nice. And I was always amazed, because I can't ever quite get it right. I yeah. try and do my parcels like that. Right, I'm going to show you this very, right. very okay, quickly. Okay, let's do this very quickly. Um, then. So there are two other ways that you can use free freezer paper for a pleat cake. Okay. Okay, and I'm sorry that I'm going to have to do this quick, but I want, I want to do the quilting. So I am putting, I've just cut round the template with a quarter of an inch all the way round. Yeah. Okay, you just saw me do that. I just pinned it in place while I did that. And then what I'm going to do is um, have the paper shiny side up. I should have kept the pin in. Hang on, in fact, could I have a pin back? Sorry. Thank you. I'm going to keep the pin. So I would keep it pinned in place while you're doing okay. this, if your shape is large enough to do that, okay? So the shiny side is up. Yeah. And then I'm just going to fold the edge of the fabric over, and I'm going to use the iron. Oh, this is where the mini iron is fantastic, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, really, really good to press that into place. Okay. Um, wow. Oh, Hang on, this sorry. is like English paper piecing. <laughs> so that there is folded over and just held in place. Yes, so now what you would do, you would go all the way around. Um, you may need to pop a pin or a little bit of glue on the corner, but you just keep going and ironing around the edges, okay? And then when you applique this, yeah. you can either leave one side unstitched and just pull whip the paper, it from there, whip yeah. it out from the top. Yeah. Or you sew all the way around, cut the back out, and then pull it out. You see, you saw, this won't be, it's only attached to the seams. Yes. So it's quite easy to pull it out from the front. That's okay. how I would do it. Okay. Oh, excellent. And then one other way is to... Um, mm -mm. So there is, it's, it's almost like English paper piecing with it, isn't it? Yes. Um, the other thing, actually, talking of English paper piecing that I've seen people do with freezer paper is when they've got when they've got all of their their layouts that they want is that they then press them onto the freezer paper so that they know exactly where they're going, so that you know the wind doesn't yes. come and sort of unsettle it. Yes. They 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 press it onto the freezer paper and then they they just take off the one that they want. Yeah. So they do it in absolute order. I thought it was genius. So I have just. Ironed the shiny side down, down, right? And now I'm just using glue in the same way that you would if oh, okay. you were, which I'll show you later anyway. Um, as if you were English paper. Like piecing. I'm not doing it really quickly. As if you're English paper. Piecing. Okay. Perfect. So that's three ways. That's three different ways. So then, With if paper. I'm sorry, if I've done it this way and I've glued again, stitch all the way around. Again, you can pull it out in the same way I've just described. Pull it out from the top or cut it from the back. Okay. And whip it out. There you go. Okay. So then, excellent. Right. So, let's, what's next? Let's I, you, now, you, see, you keep saying about, ah. before you do, I'll let you get ready to, for, for okay. quilting, because I'm quite intrigued about this, but um, I wanted to show you these bundles. Now, hang on, let me just grab the freezer paper. Ta-da! Oh. Using freezer paper in both of these, um, is, is absolutely perfect. If you want freezer paper on its own, now this doesn't come as a bundle. Now this is just this is just with these. Then it's four ninety nine just to get your freezer paper, all fifty square feet of it. It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot of freezer paper fun. Please check out your baskets on that. That's four ninety nine. X U E Q twenty three is your code to get that. If you've all been going crazy for freezer paper, everybody should have at least one roll of freezer paper. Now let's have a look at these applique bundles. Um, we have got. The pastel bundle here, which is very, very pretty. Uh, they're all of our Makawa uh, Spectrum solids. They are 100% cotton. Now, this has got a slightly different template. So this is um, so that you can create a scene. Beautiful for um, doing your flower baskets and things like that, ready for Easter. Maybe you want to do an applique cushion or something. It's going to be lovely. 16.99, two and a half meters of fabric. Fabulous and your applique template. So use all the techniques with your freezer paper that Lucy's just talked about. Nice. Now, this is the spring basket bundle here. 
Here we go, 16.99, again, two and a half meters of fabric, beautiful color selection there, actually really enjoying that. And again, the same um, flower basket applique template set for 16.99. Now, I'm gonna take this over to here because Lucy, this is what I don't really understand is how you then quilt with this. Now the applique mm -hmm. bundles have gone with the freezer paper and the pattern have gone. They've sold out, well done. Well done. Um, but we're going to still use it for those of you that have, you know, have, yeah. have bought it. And also, you know, you can, you can use other templates. Mm. Yeah, I'm just putting the walking foot on. So all I've done is I've just basted, um, I've used the 505 and I've just basted a little sample. Because we're going to pretend this is a quilt. We've got this next hour if you want the 505 basting yeah. spray. We'll talk about that later. So, and then I've ironed on um, the teardrop shape and the star shape. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to quilt. So you would just put these wherever you want to position them okay. on, your, on your quilt. And then I'm going to quilt around it. Now, what I don't want to do is sew over the paper. So the freezer paper is now being pressed onto. So you've, you've yep. taken your template, you've drawn around it, cut it out. Mm -hmm. And then just stuck it on. That's, yeah. that's where we... Okay, so... Oh, that's all I've done. So I don't want to sew on, to, on the paper. Okay. Okay? Because it's going to be difficult to get it out. Okay. Okay. So... So you have to be able to sew with some degree of accuracy. First. Yes, because I'm just going to go around the edge. But what this allows you to do is create shapes that perhaps um, you wouldn't be able to do free, you, you can do them freehand, but you know, perhaps you, you don't like You'd free struggle. motion quilting yeah. or you don't want to um, eyeball it. So you're just going to go around, I'm doing this very quickly, so it may not be the neatest work I've ever done, but just to give you an idea. So I'm just using the paper as a guide yeah. to give me that shape. Okay. So these work as quilt on. patterns. This is fabulous. Yes. So it works as in a quilt in all those pattern. different sizes as well. Yeah. So you have all those different shapes to play about with. But well, that's brilliant. That's and absolutely brilliant. Get... So you can use whatever shape you want. Yeah. Oh look. And I didn't stop and start properly as I would if I was quilting, but just to give you an idea. So okay. you could you could do raindrops all over the place, or yeah. you could do those like leaves. Or you could, you right, could. Right, this is, yeah. One of the things that I was going to say that I would have done if I was, had time was I would do one. Yeah. And then position that where I wanted it. And then, so I wouldn't stick them all down because as you're moving the quilt around, it's going to move. Yeah. So I would maybe do one at a time. And then you can position this where you want it and, and go around it. You also then can use this shape that you've drawn as a echo template quilt. like you would. So you could echo just as this it is, is in the pattern. So that's now given you a foundation to follow. Yes. But this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. So you don't want to draw out the shape by yourself. You don't want to mark your quilt with, you know, a lot of people don't like putting ink or, you well, know, no, again, marking. you know, you run that risk. You always run that risk, don't yes. you, of just not quite being able to get it out. And this also, is superb. There are, there are a lot of shapes, you know, it can be tricky to transfer things yeah. accurately. So it's nice that you've just got that paper there um, as a guide. I love this. And then you can just repeat, you know, you could keep on um, repeating that. Now, with something like the star, okay, that's quite easy to just draw around. But then if I'm going to echo that, yeah. it becomes tricky because I don't have a guide. So right. my tip for that would be, you want to get a pencil. So this is all, this is all done with your freezer paper. This bit there, that's your freezer paper. Yeah. yeah. Take a, a pencil and a ruler and draw a line through the tip, down, out through that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, or you know, you can crease it. I mean, even look with a pin. I could just do you that. You could hair marker it, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you could hair them, that's what I would do. And you just do that, okay? Okay. And that's going to give you lines to then... Oh, aim to... Aim to... Oh, good top to tip. Echo. Oh, yes. nice. 
You've got seven minutes. Okay. To show us whatever well, you need to show. Well, I'll start doing the star, yes. so at least then you've got an idea. Oh, no, hang on. I want to just talk about one other thing. I'm so sorry, because I want to get it in, because I just, this idea came to you me last this, night. You love this, you? Absolutely yeah, love this. Yeah, and I thought this was really fun. So in the applique basket, yes. um, which, which shapes that I designed, um, I drew out this leaf shape. Yes. But what I thought was, you could cut this out of freezer paper and the easiest way to do this when you want to cut more than one shape is rather than draw it out lots of times like I have just fold your freezer paper and just cut multiples and so you can cut multiples at one time okay okay so don't do too many folds because you're going to lose some of the accuracy but then you can just cut around so more than one shape at once. Your spring basket bundle with these templates in are down the bottom. So you're getting two and a half meters of fabric and that applique template set. Your freezer paper is up the top um, and this is, this is superb. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna forget the star, I'm gonna do this one. What? I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm just, just excited. Just, yeah, well, I know, I see this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just spacing these out along yeah. the quilt, so shiny side down, yeah. okay, and just leaving a bit of a space. Spend time doing this at home to get it nice and accurate if you want to have a go at this. Now, Christine in Merseyside says, morning, I trace all my Joe Carter patterns onto freezer paper, then iron them onto my fabric and cut out. Reuse the paper oh, over and over, perfect. Well, that's great. Great idea. Yeah. You, you can Perfect. reuse it, it's just not... Not going to be, it's, yeah. Yeah. They, it's like reusing anything, it's not yes. always the same yeah. second time around. So I've got my three shapes here, and I'm just going to use this as a guide. So I'm almost using this like it's a stencil. This is so super. I'm not going around the shapes, I'm using the shapes like an assault course. Right? I've never actually done this, I'm doing this for the first time. I literally had the idea last night because I was looking at the shapes. I mean, shapes. what better time to just experiment yeah, and to live just on have TV. a go? Why yeah, not? Go, so go for it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to intertwine. Ooh. Okay. So for anybody that, you know, likes the look of that sort of organic, um, curvy kind of quilting, but you like to follow a pattern. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, not yeah. everybody wants to just go on live television and, and also, randomly start quilting. But, but the other thing is if you... Um, okay, so I've gone one way. Yeah. Can you see that? So I've just gone around, I've literally gone around the leaves. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to go from the other side. Because otherwise you'd be looking at doing this free motion, which quite frankly is scary. Um, and so this is a lovely way of yeah. being able to do it nice and controlled with your walking foot on through all these layers. Nice and thick at this. Oh, lovely. And it doesn't have to be absolutely exact, just off no. you go. And you'll have more time at home, so you can be, you can be exact. That's gorgeous. If you want to. But then that's going to give you a lovely quilting pattern, but with that accuracy that you wouldn't, you wouldn't get that kind of accuracy if you were totally freehanding it. If so you um, can get that chain like rope like effect. And I could keep repeating that. I could then move these leaves down one. Do you see what I mean? And keep yes. repeating. There's lots of ways that you can play about with it to create chain and rope sort and of And also effect. with your orifil as well, because I was thinking with, with, the, with the raindrop teardrop leaf or whatever you want mm -hmm. to call it, you could do that in different colours, yes. could do It'll a rainbow, but it would be absolutely beautiful. stunning. Do the same thing with that, all different colours intertwining. this show just suddenly stops, it's because producer Hannah's just down tools and she's gone home to try this. She can't <laughs> wait. She's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do my cushions. She's, this is going to be my new thing. She's getting so excited up there. It's like, just, you've got another three hours, producer Hannah. Then you can go home and try it. And but she loves quilting and she's very, very excited to try this. Yeah, you could do that with this shape as well. Yes. So you'd have a different sort of a loopy kind well, of Well, you know what I'm thinking? Mm. Um, Freddie's school is 60 this year and they're having lots of 60th celebrations along with Paddington Bear. They're all 60. Uh, he looks great, you know, isn't he? And, um, but I'm thinking of doing a central panel for a quilt with a 60 in there. Lovely. Well, I'm suddenly thinking I could do kind of like a rainbow 60 and I can do it like that because I was yeah. wondering how to do it. You've done and it. Cut your, just cut, draw your shape, draw the 60 on. Yes. And you can quilt round it. Question from Helen. Uh, don't you compress the wadding by pressing the freezer paper on it, says Helen. I mean, slightly, this wadding's very, very fine anyway. And if anything, all that's going to do is mean that you're going to think, and then once you're moving it around, it's going to kind of puff. When this is a this is everything. a cotton one. If, obviously, if you're working with like 100% polyester wadding, be a 
bit more careful. You don't want to end up with toast. Um, no. But th this is a cotton one, so it's it's safer to yeah. press. And on. this, but this isn't a very, you know, it's not got a high loft. So um, when it's something like that, you it's not, you know, you're really, right. you, it's not damaging it no. by doing it. No more than pressing it as you're quilting with your foot. So Lucy, a minute and a half, why freeze paper? Go. Um, oh, because it's so versatile. There's lots of fun things that you could do with it. Um, and yeah, you can just experiment and have fun. And it's, and it's lovely whether you're a hand sewer, machine sewer, there are lots of ways. And you can print on it, but you need to cut them to A4 and be careful. Okay, no, printer. I think this is fabulous. And yeah. I, I think suddenly the world of, um, uh, you know, in, uh, self-interpretation is wonderful mm -hmm. as well. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put, I'm gonna replieve KFs on everything for Freddie. Yeah, it's um, so easy, it's really easy to use. Brilliant. Now, if you're gonna do the quilting, then feed dogs down on a walking foot. Do you need feed dogs no, down? No, no, feed dogs up. No, feed dogs up, mm -hmm. producer Anne, she's like, do I need my feed dogs up? No, no feed no, dogs no. up, keep everything as it was. This yeah. isn't free motion, you see, that's the beauty of it, it's not free motion. No. So those of you that get scared by free all motion. Of that, all of that curve, all of those curves, with my walking foot. I think and this then is you brilliant. Just, you literally just pull it off. I almost want to do like a sampler block just with like stars in one and... And, and, not, just... and then you've got ready-made confetti. <laughs> for to any occasion. For, a party. for any occasion. Yes. But well, that's brilliant. Yeah. We're going to have a party in the office with some <laughs> of this later. <laughs> That's how we are. That's how we roll here at Sewing Quarter. Any occasion for celebration. Yeah. Uh, this is wonderful. So four ninety nine for your freezer paper. Um, please check out your baskets because the one with the template is gone. Lucy, thank you so much. We're going to be back in two hours for that. Next hour with quilting things. See you in a moment. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Hi, my name's Jo Carter and these are my top three tips. My first tip would be, even if you, your sewing room is normally a real mess, and mine always is, try and take the time to organise your fabric, your stash into colour order, because being able to see it and have it there, meaning you can pick out the colours and have them to hand and try fabrics together, really does help when you're quilting and it means you use all of your fabric and things don't get lost and forgotten about. My second tip would be try and get to know your sewing machine. So spend an hour or an afternoon trying out buttonholes and various stitches and just get to know what it can do because then when you've tried them, you know you can bring things into projects and make life easier a lot of the time. And my third tip would be try and sew when there's somebody else around so that they can keep you supplied with fresh cups of tea so your sewing's not interrupted. <laughs> We've got something amazing coming for all fans of Tilda as we've got a TV exclusive on Tilda's brand new book, Sunshine Sewing. We have the TV exclusive until the end of April, so get your copy from us before anywhere else and pour over Tilda's latest sewing creations. The brand new book features three full-size quilts as well as pillows, soft toys and fabric bowls, all made in Tilda's charming style. You'll be able to delve into 12 brand new summer projects and get inspired by her countryside themed designs. So add some sunshine into your life with Tilda's brand new book, Sunshine Sewing, available on our website now. On Saturday the 17th of March, tune in and join master quilter Victoria Peet as she makes a beautiful farmhouse quilt designed by Lynn Goldsworthy. This Red Village farmhouse quilt is made from gorgeous rich red fabric and floral creams and is adorned with quaint quilted houses. Victoria will be showing us how to make this quilt using foundation paper piecing and two interlocking blocks. We've got everything you need to make this quilt with all the fabric, wadding, backing and binding included in a handy bundle. So sit back and relax as Victoria gives you all of her tips and tricks for this stunning make. So get ready to start quilting on Saturday the 17th of March at 9am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Follow us on Instagram. 
Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Hello, welcome back. Now, um, lots of you, <laughs> there's been the great freezer paper rush. So lots of you popped it in your trolley. Hang on, where's it gone? Oh, is it my trolley behind me? Hang on. Is it? Oh, it's right down the bottom. Here we go. Oh, yeah, good bend. There we go. Uh, so if you would like this, please do check out your baskets. That is producer Hannah's um, message for you this morning. $4.99, we've just seen some great demos as to how to use this. I, I think it's fabulous. It's demystified it for me. I would hate to see you miss out on this. I've had this sat in my workroom for a little while. I'm not quite sure how to use it, apart from obviously, you know, to keep the mess off the table. Um, brilliant, brilliant. I'm going to be quilting away like crazy now with this. Four ninety nine. And we did what, Bridget Hannah? Oh, we've got a photograph. Look at this. Whoa. Now this. Who's this from? From D. Whoa. So she loved Lucy's demonstration and she made that block with freezer paper from large leaves. Oh, look at that with freezer paper. So that's all needle turned. Wow. That's superb. Um, just be aware how popular that is. Lucy's done a great demo there. So um, just be aware that that's, if you've got the freezer paper, you know, like I say, it's not like you can just pop down your local supermarket and get it. We will reorder it. But it's just one of those things that sometimes it takes a bit of time to get in. So get it when you can. Brilliant. Lots of you have got that in your basket. Oh, brilliant. Now, this hour, gosh, where to start? I've got all sorts of goodies. This is about qu the quilting hour, the quilting tools for the job. We've got lots of new viewers, hello, welcome, uh, who've come on from Sky. Lots of you that are saying, do you know what? I'm normally a dressmaker, don't know where to start with quilting. Or maybe you just don't know where to start with quilting. That's absolutely fine too. Or maybe, uh, you know, you're someone that's been quilting for years by yourself and, and you haven't realised that there are lots of new things that we can tempt you with. So um, where to start? Let's start with our rotary cutters because this is always a great way, a great place to start. Now we've got a, a large selection on the website. There's no right or wrong. It just comes down to personal choice and personal preference. Now producer Hannah and I have this one. And I'll be honest, this is another situation where I thought, for that, you know, what's the difference? I'll just buy a cheap one. Yeah, I did, it was rubbish. Um, this is $24.99. It's the one that a lot of our quilters use. The reason that I bought this one as opposed to other makes is because I have animals, children, and when that button there is out like that, it's locked out. And so they, they can't play with it. Now, when you press that, then you absolutely can. Okay, so it's, just, it's got a good safety feature there. And also, because it's when you squeeze it, that's when the blade is activated. If you accidentally drop it, I think it was Joy in one of our shows said that she often had quilters that came to her workshops in the summer in sandals. And she's like, oh no, if you're gonna wear sandals whilst you're, whilst you're cutting, make sure you've got a rotary cutter like this. Cause you know, accidents happen, things get knocked off the table, but you know that that blade will safely go back. So also, um, this a 45 mil rotary cutter is the place to start. They're a smaller, they're a larger, they all have their place, but the 45 mil is, is your staple day-to-day -day one to use. Now, the other reason that producer Hannah bought this one is because, let me show you, the way it's set up at the moment is right-handed. But if you unscrew that, there, and I just have to remember which order these all go in. Diddly dee then you can take that off. Be very careful, obviously very, very careful with that. Don't give it to your child to change it or anything like that, or your dog. Um, and then you just rebuild it over this side. Then all of a sudden, if you're a lefty lefter, it's a left-handed rotary cutter. Ta-da! Perfect. 
So that's why producer Hannah has it, because she is a magical left hand. Now, I need to use this in one of my demos. I'm not going to swatch it back. Bear with me. But it just goes to show how easy and quick it is. You see, my son, has, he hasn't decided if he's left or right-handed yet. No, he, he does everything with both. So, ba 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 ba. Whee! There we go. Back in there. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Um, there we go. In, done. How quick and easy is that? And that's always live on air, which is always, you know, if anything's going to go wrong, it's then. But there we go. And also, if, if your blade ever feels a bit wobbly, just have a little tighten there. You know, if ever you're not getting the best cut, sometimes these just come a little bit loose with rotary cutters. Just have a quick tighten. Um, I discovered that the other day. So $24.99. We love that. Um, MBPH15. Now, the other thing, of course, is that you need to have a blade that's sharp, right? So we've got replacement blades for you. Now, this is for the 45. These are replacement blades for the 45. Now, how many do you get in there? Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Where does it say? Oh, it's just here. Yeah, it's just, you're just one, one, one replacement blade there, so you know where you are. £3.50, and on its way to you. So you've always got a spare. Um, please despair of them carefully. Actually, do you know what I do? I write on them. So that one, this one, for instance, once it's had its day, I would then write for paper on. And then, and then it gets demoted. It's like my scissors, you see. They get demoted down. Once you've done your fabric, you've had your time with fabric, then you move on to paper uh, so nothing gets wasted. Um, and then if you are going to dispose of them, you know, be very, very careful how you dispose of them. Uh, UHZG02 is your code for that. There we go. Right. Now, if you are someone who cuts large amounts of fabric regularly, um, maybe you are someone that likes, like me, likes to cut lots of strips and things like that, um, then maybe, or just go through a lot of layers, then maybe have a look at going up a size. And this is your Clover Rotary Cutter. Uh, this is soft touch on the handle there, so nice and soft there and there. Now, this is only for right-handers, I'm afraid, um, but it's $24.99, and look, this is the thing. It has a very large blade. It's like when, um, with any kind of gears or anything, the larger the blade, the less effort that has to go through it. So, uh, you know, it's, it just whoosh, off it goes through. Lots of layers of fabric is great if you want to try and do it through there. Or, you know, heavy duty stuff, or if you're just doing a lot of cutting, then $24.99. SLGQ51. Now, don't do as one lady I know does, or did to start off with. She's like, why do I need to spend out on a cutting mat? It's fine, I'll just use a rotary cutter and my chopping board. Yeah, no, that's the fastest way to wreck your blades. Do not use your chopping board at home for, for cutting your, you know, get yourself the right tools for the job. Um, and this, hoo hoo, this is one of the largest mats that we offer. It is a bit special. Look at this color. Normally they're just, you know, green, aren't they? Just, just, but this is the largest mat that we have. Get the largest mat you can get for your space. That would be my absolute top tip. And that's Lucy's top tip too, is get the largest mat you possibly can. Um, you're not always going to use all of it, but when you do use it, I've been making curtains, and, uh, and it's come in so handy just to know that I can just cut and cut. Perfect. Um, and also, if you're working on the kitchen table, believe you me, $49.99 is much less expensive than having to get your table re-French polished. Been there too. Uh, so, <laughs> la, 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 la. Uh, so just, you know, just look after your surface. This is also um, a self-healing one. Now, what that means, not all mats are, but a self-healing one means that when you cut through it, it doesn't leave kind of a crevice where the blade's gone through. It heals back together. So you always have that lovely cutting space, which means that also you don't end up with a <coughs> as you're going over all the bumps from where you previously cut. That is a technical term, producer Hannah. Yes, I think we all appreciate that. <coughs> as you... <laughs> As you go over, you know, we all know what I mean. One more time for like, as you, oh, slightly different key. Um, as you go over, do I sound like Roadrunner? Um, 
And so that, that's how you do it. And also with this, we spoke yesterday in some detail about cutting your bias binding as well. And on this mat, what I love about this is that you've got a lovely 45 degree angle. So when you're cutting your fabric on the 45, you can lay your fabric out, selvage to selvage along there, and then you can cut, you can use this as a guide to cut on your 45 degree angle, to cut your bias binding, to cut on the bias. Uh, and so do, do always remember that you do have your mat there. So you've got 45 degrees here and here. Now this is all in inches, which is perfect for your quilting. And we do like that an awful lot. But if you are a dressmaker, flip it over and it's centimeters. What's that, producer Hannah? Oh. <laughs> she's got, she's got, uh, she's got quite, quite excited about this. She says, if you're pinning when you're dressmaking, it will scratch your table. I, I feel this may have happened to you a little bit, producer Hannah. Um, so pin onto a cutting mat, and you won't scratch the varnish or the top or the finish of whatever surface it is that you are working on. Um, again, you know, get the largest size that you possibly can. I have had my cutting mat now for, oh gosh, at least maybe five years. One of them I've had since I did my GCSE art, uh, which, you know, was, was not that recently, actually last century. It's a bit depressing, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> excuse me, I just go weep somewhere. Seriously, last century. And my A-levels too, gosh. Uh, but what a great cutting mat, worth that investment. Thanks, mum and dad, actually they bought that for me. I think I managed to wangle that out of that. I was like, yeah, A-level art, mum. Need a good cutting mat. Uh, and, and brilliant, she did, perfect. And, and so there, here we go, years and years on, I still use it. In fact, my son has a little cutting mat as well, a little cutting mat for, and, and in his desk. I've cut it to size in his little desk and then he can sit there and I can wipe it clean, perfect. So many, many uses, uh, $49.99. I love this green color. Now, not everybody has such a large space and that's absolutely perfect. I have various sizes of cutting mats for various things. Um, we've picked out a few because, you know, we also wanted to give you a choice of color. This is, this is the exciting thing. When I first um, went into the, the, the wonderful world of cutting mats, it was only green. It was only, you know, that dark green color and that was, that was all it was. Pink, yes. So again, self-healing, again from Prim, so a trusted brand. Um, inches one side, centimeters, bing, the necks uh, on the other side, and a lovely grid here so that you can really see your five centimeter markers as well. Really handy to have. Um, just so many uses, so many uses. Um, so get the largest one that you, you can, um, or actually get a variety. This is half the size of the green. This is how they go up. It's like paper sizes. We've got even smaller ones on the website, uh, but everything is handy. I mean, even down to the little A4 ones, you know, if you're just doing a bit on your lap, I often have a tray with a little cutting mat on and just, you know, work from there. Uh, but not with a rotary cutter, no, on my lap, no, obviously. But, you know, if I'm pinning and stuff like that, it's just it's having a workspace, isn't it? Because I don't want to get glue and stuff all over. And then just a baby wipe brings them up a treat. There are actually sprays you can get to take off any, any glue or anything as well. Yeah, there are. We should stock that too. Um, there you go. Buy it, Ian. Just a little tip. Um, so get the one that you, oh, you like the look of as well. You know, if you want something bright and cheery, fab. $28.99 for the pink. And the, and it's 49 out of time for the, for the green one down there. It looks yellow, but it's green. It's like a lime green. Lime, is that a thing? Lime milkshake? Is it, producer Hannah? Where did you go for a lime milkshake? Oh, Kathy, near where you grew up. Oh, that's very exciting. Uh, 28.99. Uh, QIPH72. Now, the other cutting mat that uh, if you quilt, and, and Lucy would tell you, quite frankly, you need in your life is this one. We had messages in yesterday uh, saying, yes, 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 absolutely love mine. Look, it's even got Lucy's threads on from yesterday. Uh, this is your Ulfa rotating cutting mat. 
Now, you might not need all of these straight away, but this one, if you are cutting back blocks, if you're doing anything intricate, that again, you don't want to disturb. If you've cut things on the bias, you don't want to move it around too much in case you accidentally stretch or pull out of place, then this is fab. Because you place it on there at the angle that you want, cut, and then if you've got to do the other side, spin it around and cut again. Absolutely fab. Again, self-healing, loads of, uh, of marks here for your 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree. It's all on there. Absolutely perfect. Now, here's the thing, okay? When you get this home, don't do as so many have, including me when I've walked across the studio with it and go, oh, I've broken it. You haven't. It's meant to do that. That is how it rotates, okay? One on top of the other. I did have a moment where I thought I'd broken it, but no, it's all okay. Uh, that's how it spins. Uh, this is actually quite a spongy, soft base. So that sits on any surface really nicely and grips as well. That's the other thing. Now, this is one of our most popular items. We struggle to keep this in stock. I'll be honest, we do struggle to keep it in stock. So now that we have it in stock at the moment, grab it. So it's you're improving your accuracy, um, you're, you're just made, and also safety as well. Cutting off your dog is duk, 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 duk. Don't, you know, we've all tried to cut, haven't we, at that awkward angle, and it just hasn't worked. 39.99, 32.99, and get rid of that awkward angle cutting thing. It, it, it's not safe, it's not great. This is it. So cut accurately, cut safely, 32.99. You might not realize you need it, but once you've got it, you'll never go back. It's one of those. Now, oh, cake decorating, yes. We, we did have someone messaging going, I use it for cake decorating. That's a really good idea, actually. She didn't send any cake, though, sadly. You know, just a thought. <laughs> no, we had a good breakfast this morning, producer Hannah. We did all right for breakfast. You can tell the morning sickness is passing. I made everybody breakfast this morning and could bear the smell of it. Um, <laughs> what, what, what should we look at next? Stripolo oh, stripology. Yes. Now, um, I'm, I'm not going to do such an in-depth demo as I did yesterday. You can watch yesterday's show back if you want um, to know more about this. But I am also aware that a lot of you did something other than watch sewing quarter. I, I don't know what else you could possibly have done, but apparently you did other things other than watch us here. So um, I will recap very, very quickly. We have these back in stock. Uh, one of, we've got two different stripologies, and actually I will talk briefly about the uses for both, um, but these haven't been in stock since one of them went out of stock in December, one of them went out of stock in January. It means that if you are a Sky viewer, some of you may not have seen this at all. Now, this is the larger one. This is the one that I personally have. Um, and the reason that I chose this, a lot of umming and ahhing um, over, over which one, because there's a nine pound price difference. Where am I scrap? I want a big scrap. Um, Oh, this is going to clash lovely, isn't it? Uh, so th the reason that I went for this one is because I thought, you know what? I'm making an investment. Am I going to regret not having the larger size? So I went for this one. Um, and for another reason as well, what I use mine most for is cutting strips. The hint's in the name, stripology. Um, and so cut my strips very, very easily. It gives me a great guide. Um, my fear with cutting is that I'm going to cut myself, not cut straight. I'm going to waste fabric. Um, and also, I'm, I, you know, I, I completely understand Lucy's uh, sentiment when she says, I don't have time for that. And with this, I managed to cut. The very first time I used it after a show, I just stayed on and went, oh, I'll just have a little cut. I cut two meters of fabric into strips in under 10 minutes which was just amazing, which if you're having to realign a ruler every time just isn't going to happen. So you've got these grooves every half an inch. You can also move it across a quarter of an inch. You've got a guide down here to move it across a quarter of an inch if you then want to get that accuracy as well. So you'd make your first cut and then move it across if you wanted to do that. Uh, the joy of this is um, don't worry about maths. It's all done for you. So the most uh, popular strips, obviously, are your sort of jelly roll, design roll strips, which is a two and a half inch strip, regularly used for binding and things like that. And also your one and a half inch strip as well. So down here, you've got a little key, and a piece of fabric there. Um, every square is a two and a half inch cut. So I would cut in there, cut there, cut there, 
cut there all the way along. Now this goes across to 20 inches. So you've got a huge amount of cutting space along there, which is why I went for this one. The other one is slightly shorter, so I'd have to be readjusting my fabric. Uh, life's too short, so I just went for the larger one. Uh, and then every time there's a star, that's an inch and a half, cut, 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 cut. So you're not having to count squiffy maths or anything like that. You're, you're cutting and it's great. You've got your non-slip grip, so you are safe. It's not moving anywhere, no matter how small a piece of fabric that you are cutting down. Um, and, and it's absolutely great. Also, at Christmas, I think everybody got um, one, of my, one of my little iPad stands. And that involves lots of 10-inch squares. And that's got this very clearly marked on here. Now, that is why I went for this one particularly. I absolutely love it. And also you can cut back your charm packs as well. If you are someone, so that's if you, you know, this is great for cutting your strips and I will show you how to use that in just one moment. If you're someone that has got maybe a variety of things, you're doing lots of quilting and you're cutting back um, to either charm pack sizes or you're squaring up blocks or anything like this, then this is a really fabulous one to have. It's slightly smaller, maybe space is the issue, in which case go for this one. So this is 12 inches uh, by, I think it's 12 by 12, isn't it? 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Um, but you see here, this, you can see you've got more guides on here. So if you're cutting a three inch square, four inch square, and again, you can have these in half inch increments as well. If you are cutting them back, if you are, sh if you are squaring up, if you have fabric that you want to make into charm pack sizes of whatever size, then this is a great place to shop. Can I show you? This was the first time that this has been on Sky. Yeah, yesterday. So let me just show you with these how we do this. So let me spin it around for me. What, what, can, what you got there, Wayne? Thank you. Um, now, here we go. First thing that I would do. So I've, uh, this is salvage to salvage. You can see two salvages there. Salvage to salvage there, folded, there it is, and in half again. So I will just neaten up those edges. Often your fabric will come sort of already folded like that. That's fine, just align the edges. The other thing to, to bear in mind is you've got kind of a teardrop shape here. Just make sure your fabric isn't in that teardrop. Your zero starts there. Just make sure that your fabric isn't sitting in that teardrop because sometimes you won't, if you don't get a clean cut and you just get a little bit of fabric just caught in the bottom, it's because you've done that. So again, easy cut done. Now, if I wanted to do a two and a half strip, in cut, perfect. Now, uh, maybe I want to do a four inch square. So two and a half plus four, six and a half, let's go there. Um, and then just drop my blade in. And there, so time saving every single time. Uh, and then maybe I want to do just a tiny, tiny little strip. And there it is, safely done, perfect. Now, here we go. So I've got that bit, I've cut that beautifully. Look at that, all done. You know, <laughs> you know don't know I like to boast, but uh, you know, perfectly cut. Would I have managed that with anything else? Probably not, if I'm honest. So little leftover bits, I spent, <laughs> Because you're you'll laugh at this. I spent an entire evening. This is, this is, I've had a really stressful day. I can't remember what it was. And I just, I just sat in, in my little workroom, got out all my scraps. And I just sat down and I just cut and cut. And it was so therapeutic. I was like, yes. Whereas... It had been stressful for me to cut before because I was worried about cutting my fingers and the safety and everything else. Now I know that I can cut. And also, when I first started to cut, I wanted to cut squares, you know, accurately as I could, but I wasn't very good at cutting. This is great. It takes all of that guesswork out. As long as you can line fabric up, look, I've got this lined up between my lines, so I know that that is lined up straight between those guides. Now I cut this four inches, wasn't it? Yeah, there's four and eight, four inches. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna cut my selvages off. And then I'm going to go, okay, four, and then eight. So if I want to cut things down into whatever size charm pack, look at that, done, perfectly. Obviously, you might press your fabric first, uh, but there we go. And look at those, all cut, all cut absolutely perfectly. There's no wibble, there's no wobble, um, and it, it is just done. And then if I wanted to open that up, then I could then trim that back uh, however I wanted and safely. In fact, I will even show that because... Um, even if you've moved it, then that's absolutely fine. 
because look, I can stay. So even if you're just squaring up your blocks, you know, as Lucy was yesterday, she'd, uh, she'd done something on a bias, she then wanted to just square it up, then there you go. And I've got yet another perfectly cut four inch square to add into my pile. And then you've got, what you've got is a stash of useful off cuts that you can then do all sorts of different quilting with. You've got your own pre-cuts there, fraction of the price done in the fabrics that you love, in the plain fabric. Actually buying plain fabric pre-cuts can be quite expensive. Obviously your designer stuff, that's a different matter, we want that. Um, but actually to just, to just have your pre-cuts in plain fabrics, it might be that it embellishes your beautiful fabrics that you've spent a lot of money on, or it might just be that they're handy to have, or that you just love those colours and you just want to use them. And so there we've got a two and a half inch strip. What's that? Is that just an inch? Just an inch strip if you want. All done safely, carefully, quickly. Um, so if you're trimming down your blocks, this is a great one. If you're cutting great long uh, lengths, so I, I like to get different fabrics in and, uh, and, and just cut them into my own fabric design rolls then and that's why I went for the larger one but the choice is yours they will both do effectively the same thing but if you're a little bit lazy like me and you don't want to have to keep adjusting fabric then go for go for the larger one um, I'm not at the stage yet where I'm intricately cutting back blocks so that wasn't appropriate for me but again I can still use that so this is your main graphic here 53.99 for the sake of nine pounds, I went, actually, I'm going to get more use out of this one. And then the smaller one here, but this might be absolutely where you are with all those lovely guidelines for your, for your squares so that you know that you've got everything perfect. And of course, your 12 and a half inch is a, is a great size, a very useful size as well, uh, and a regular quilting size to give you a finished 12 inch block. 53.99 um, on this one, 44.99. The choice is yours, but incredibly useful. I cannot recommend them highly enough. I absolutely love it. And, and the nice thing is, is that I was looking on our fan page yesterday, and so many of you saying, yes, absolutely does what it says. Great piece of kit. And I would say that 99 times out of 100, when I go into my workroom, I will end up using this for something. It, it's one of those things. It's a great workhorse. There we go. Right. I've got lots of other creative grids. Uh, she's Hannah's given me quite a lot, which is nice. I put this cloth down just so that you can see the different markings if you're wondering, what's she doing? Uh, right, another great place to start. We had some of the, what's she doing? I randomly get asked that. Now, uh, <laughs> we regularly get asked, where do I start with rulers? I'm new to quilting, where do I start? There's a, a whole array. And I was with you, I was that person that used to stand in the haberdashery shop looking a little bit lost hoping that if I look lost enough, you know, a shop assistant might come and help me. They didn't, they banned me and said, don't come back until you've had that baby uh, because you look very pregnant when I had Freddie and that was, you know, uh, so it probably will happen again. Uh, <laughs> even though I discovered the woman in the haberdashery shop had been a midwife in a previous life. So I was like, wow, how rude. Anyway, anyway, we digress. Um, here we go. This is a great place to start. It's not too large and wieldy, so you can trim back. This is 12 and a half inches by six and a half inches. So again, if you're doing your 12 inch finished blocks, then you can still cut these back. Um, also, if you are um, doing six inch blocks, maybe you've sewn two together, you want to you know, measure, trim, whatever, you've got that. Um, you can also fold your fabric, cut strips. It's very, very handy. A couple of things just to mention with, uh, with your Creative Goods ruler, you will notice that there's an opaque bit in here. This is your inbuilt grip. So this, is, this isn't gonna rub off, this isn't gonna wear off, this is inbuilt into the plastic. And that is why these don't slip. They all have these. Even down to the very, very smallest, smallest rulers, they all have this inbuilt grip. So you're not having to pay extra once you get your ruler to get those little annoying sticky things to put on to stop it. But it also means that it doesn't wear out. So this is a ruler for life. Once you've bought this, as long as you look after it and you don't let the dog stand on it or sit on it or anything else, then it's absolutely for life. You can tell I've got a big dog, can't you? You know, he would, he would break it if he stood on it. So there they are. Now, the other thing is, you might go, well, hang on a minute. You've got more on one side than you have on the other. This is quarter of an inch and this is a half inch. So these are the, the magic 
uh, the magic numbers that we use in quilting. If we want to just check a quarter of an inch, yep, you've got that. A half inch, yes, you've got that. Now, the other thing, because Creative Grids are a ruler company that make rulers for quilters, they are quilters making rulers for quilters, then they know that sometimes we need just inches. And sometimes, you know, we are in a hurry to do, to do our cutting. And actually, we need five and a half or something like that. Spin it around and all of the black markings give you that inch plus a half. So if I was cutting something back to five and a half, it's already there for me. I'm not trying to work out which of these many lines, because let's face it, inches have lots of denominations, um, which of those is my half an inch. I'm not worrying about that. I know that that line there is my five and a half inch or my three and a half inch or whatever. And it's done throughout the ruler. So you've always got that reference throughout there. You've also got your 45 degree line, your 60 degree line. It's such a handy little ruler and works beautifully with the rotating cutting mat. Great for classes as well. If you're out and about, you don't want to take big, uh, big rulers. This is a really handy one to have because you've got that extra length down there, but you've also got it so that you can just cut back and use it sort of as a as a half size, so a great starter one. Because that I know it is, it is confusing, isn't it? When you go onto our website and there are all these grids, like, where do I start, where do I start? Here's a great place, really nice place. Um, now, also, if you're trimming back squares, then this is another really handy shape. You, or you might have an idea of what sort of shapes you feel comfortable working with, so what sort of sizes. For some of you, you might want to start off with big, you know, 12-inch finish blocks. Um, and that's great. Some of you think, oh, that's too big. I want to start with smaller sizes, in which case go for this one. This is $16.99, and this is your eight and a half inch uh, square to cut back to. So, you, you know, that's a really handy size. Again, lots of blocks end up finishing at an eight and a half inch finished eight inch size. So great, again, for trimming back or just having, again, you know, if you've got smaller sizes and you, and you don't want a big bulky one, this is also perfect for your four and a half inch blocks, four inch blocks, and then you can put the four together, trim back. It's incredibly handy. Yesterday, Lucy was dealing with half square triangles. So you've got that line through there, which is really clear. If you're lining up to trim back, uh, then you've got that half, that halfway 45 degree angle marked on there as well. Just one note, these are all in inches. We had a question about this the other day. We have to legally give you centimeters because that's the craziness of the law. We have to give you the centimeters. There are no centimeters on this. It's all inches, just so that you know. So for quilters, but it's just a legal thing. Uh, it's the craziness of the world we live in. So there we go. Um, and now, all of these will ha also have this little thing on here. If you have on your phone an app which means that you can read QR readers, just scan it and it will take you to a whole load of videos that Creative Grids have done themselves as to how to use these rulers. So you've, you've got that option as well. If you've been away, you haven't, you know, or you want some inspiration, you can't remember how to use it, then that's great. Obviously, you know, less needed possibly for just the squares and the rectangles, but you know. You know, no. Now the other, okay, if you wanted, if you are someone that's doing your 12 and a half inch ones, so what we've done this morning um, is, is we've given you kind of the starter sizes, the regular sizes that lots of you go, well, I started off with this, with our sub designers, and you know, actually these were the, f the first ones. Um, there was a lovely thing on the fan page where someone said that she's given up eating crisps and chocolates and biscuits, and all the money that she's saving from there, she's putting in a tin to save um, for creative grids. Isn't that great? So not only are you saving, but you're then, you know, having something to really show for it. I think that's a brilliant idea. Um, yeah. So um, here we go. A 12 and a half inch. Again, your 12 inch blocks, uh, finished blocks, very, very popular in the quilting fraternity. So again, a very handy one to have. Um, and then, you know, if you've got six inch blocks that you're doing, to, you know, so if you work in six inches, 12 inches, very, very handy to have. And, and actually very clear, you can see those six inch marks, six and a half inch marks, very, very clear, so you can trim back. So just a very handy size to have. I like to work in five inches, six inches, four inches, so you know, this, is, this would be handy if I'm working in the six inches. Um, so just whatever works. And again, you've got the white ones will always be your inches, spin it around, and the black ones will always give you your inch and a half. It is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. All of them have a little hole drilled through in there so that if you want to hang it, then you can store it safely, flatly against your wall. It's entirely up to you how you want to store them, but do store them well uh, and they will last and last and last. Now, two different sizes here, and I'll show you why we've got this. 
Um, our quilting fabrics are generally, and this is the general quilting width, selvage to selvage, so when it's put on the um, rack or whatever it's called, where they, where they weave the fabric, um, it's 44 inches. That's the standard kind of quilting size, 44 inches, selvage to selvage. So when you fold it in half to cut your strips, that's going to be, what, about 22 inches. So to have a ruler that has 22 inches plus, a, you know, a little give or take, inch and a bit each side is absolutely perfect because it gives you with your rotary cutter a little safe run in before you start to cut your strips. So either of these rulers, absolutely fabulous. If you're not going for the stripology and you just want to, you know, you're going to be cutting, um, you know, various strips. A lot of the quilt as you goes or a lot of the other creative grids will, will call for like say a four inch strip to be cut. So it, it's a great way of doing these. Now let's start with the fatter one again because this gives you uh, 24 and a half inches by eight inches um, and really, really handy. So this fabric here is indeed folded selvage to selvage. Um, and so this is simply what I would do. Lucy will always ask for one of these. And it's just, you know, you don't want to be, um, you don't want to be shimmying a ruler up when you've cut sort of part way and then you've got to keep going. So first thing I would do, square off my edges. That's that done, easy. In one swoop, I've cut through salvage to salvage. Then spin it around. There we go. And then, say I wanted to do, hmm, a two and a half inch, then I would do this so that, here we go, I've got my two and a half inches there, because again, that's one of your most popular sizes. And there it is, I'm not having to try and work out where my half an inch mark is, because I've got my black side facing me, so I know that that's giving me my two and a half inch added on, so I can, I can line it up with that thick black line, and I'm good to go. Press down on it, it's absolutely fine. That is not going anywhere because of all of that lovely grip that I've got. At the end, down here, as I start to cut, I've got a good run in. I'm not starting at the very, very edge of the ruler. I've got my blade against the ruler before I even start to touch that fabric. And again, one fell swoop all the way through. That is it, done, done. And that is fabulous. And that's why we love that. And that is that cut, salvage to salvage. And that's why you need to be cutting that too, incidentally. Um, salvage to salvage, that's my strip done. When you buy a design roll, that is the width, that is the length that you are getting. So how great with your offcuts, with fabric that you've got sitting around at home that you can make your own design strips. We've got entire books. Pam and Nikki Lintot are, are fabulous at doing entire books based around your pre-cuts, your pre-cut two and a half inch strips, uh, which you can either go out and buy or you can cut your own at home. Uh, but make it safe, make it fun, you know, make it something that's actually enjoyable to do. Uh, and, and it's the right tools for the job. So that's the larger one. Maybe you want the thinner one. Again, this is just down to personal preference. This is just two inches shorter. That's, that's it. So Creative Grids have really thought about the sizes that you want. They are rulers made for quilters by quilters. This one was designed by Rachel Cross, who is actually the daughter of the founders of Creative Grid. John calls her Rachel the Ruler, so that's who, when we talk about Rachel the Ruler, that's who she is. But um, a UK-based company out of, uh, they started out of Leicester, hence the fox on the, on the design there, that's the symbol of, of, of Leicester. But now, internationally, they work with international quilters of the highest standard who really understand your quilting needs. So they are quilters for quilters, which is fabulous. $23.99 for the um, six and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. Either one is personal choice. There's no right or wrong. Um, but I would say, you know, have a smaller ruler, have a longer ruler, or your stripology, or both. You know, it's up to you. Love them. Love them. And get a good cutting mat. Yeah, get a good cutting mat. Yes, which is Hannah, where would you like to go to next? It's coming up for air. Uh, what would you like? The micro stitch tool. Yes, let's look at the micro stitch tool. This. Now, uh, here we go. This is, I don't know if I've got this in the packet somewhere, but we'll have a look. Basting. 
is another of those things there is no right or wrong. Some of you hand based your quilts, some of you spray based your quilts. Um, it, it's entirely up to you. And then someone threw this into the mix. Up until now, I have been an avid spray baster. Um, although saying that, I do get a little bit overexcited and generally have to wash my carpets after I've spray based. Don't do that, be more careful. Um, so we like to bring you different options that are going to be suitable for everyone else, everyone out there. Now this has basically a very sharp needle at the end. Be careful with that, it is sharp. Uh, but it's, it's just a delivery unit for these little clips. Now these are um, tiny, tiny stitches. You know when you buy something from a shop and it's got those plastic uh, things with the, it has the label on, the tags on? It's like a tiny, tiny, tiny one of those, but that you can easily just pull out and it's not going to damage your fabric. So this is incredibly sharp. That will go through your patchwork, your wadding, and your backing. And let's have a look at how it works. So, for example, you've got your patchwork top, your wadding, that's quite lofty wadding in there. And I want to put that all together, pop that through. You can see I've already had a go at this because I absolutely love it. Poke that through there. Now, if we, I don't know, is that as close as we can come? If I squeeze that, look, you can see that little tag has just been delivered there. It's, it's that easy. So I can just poke that through there. Whoop. Let's have a look. And it's there. Easy as. So you can just go along, pop it through, and then through. Let's see how close we can get. I just want you to see just how easy this is. There we go. Ready? Da 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 da. Whee! And that's it. It's not going to damage your quilt. Put your hand, I can't hear you. Um, it's not going to damage your quilt. Uh, it's really easy. And now, this is, this is the other thing. This is the smallest stitch tool on the market at the moment, to my knowledge. That's what it says um, on there. That's their, their words, not mine. Um, so very, very handy. You've got black refills. You've got white refills. So use the ones uh, that are going to show up on your fabric the best. It's going to save you time. It's going to say it's just really easy and quick. They're not large. They're really super tiny. And then when you're done, either cut them out or if I just show you, just get a hold of it like that and literally just pull it and it's out. That's it done. There you go. Just comes out the other side. So it's really, it's incredibly easy and quite satisfying. It's not, you know, when you get tags in, the, in your clothes and you're like, and it hurts your teeth. No, it's nothing like that. It's really easy, just with your fingers. Love them. What's that? Sorry, Bridget Hannah? Oh, it was Angie. Yeah, it was Angie Atwood said, you need this in your life. I completely agree. I absolutely love it. I'm sold on it. Um, now, until I found this, I was an avid spray baster. It's gone. Now, we had this from the last hour. Lucy used it in the last hour. Uh, there are as many different ways of, of basting as there are, uh, you know, quilting, basically. Um, but your spray base is another way of doing it. And this is, this is again, another way that I like to use um, because, quite frankly, I can't bother to hand tack. Um, I just, you know, like Lucy says, don't have time for that. Now, this is your 505. We get asked a lot, which is the right one um, for my spray basting? And this is the one that Lucy really recommends. Uh, now, this is a temporary fabric adhesive. Now, the, uh, the very important thing about that is when you first start to spray baste, just do a little bit and then lay it down. And you can sort of smooth it out on there. So don't spray the whole quilt. You can, but it then becomes very tricky. I would just do a little section at a time. It's odorless, it's colorless, it doesn't stain your fabric, it doesn't stay in your fabric, but it is repositionable. So if you get a, little, a few little lumps and bumps first time, it doesn't matter, just peel it back and then smooth it back down again. Um, and and it's not, you know, it doesn't permanently adhere, which is very important. Um, you know, you can get permanent ones and that's great for your applique if you want to, you know, do that. But this is great for your spray, uh, spray basting, for your quilts, um, but there's, you know, 
there are, there are so many different things out there. That's why I say, you know, you might have been quilting for years and you might have spent hours tacking by hand or getting safety pins in. There are other ways. Maybe now, uh, you know, dexterity is an issue and you don't want to go with the safety pins all the time, then spray basing is a great alternative. Obviously, always spray base in a well-ventilated uh, area and don't get it all over your carpet like I did. 7.99 AJGQ05. Hurrah! Good. The batting tape. Oh, I like the batting tape. I've got two sorts of batting tape. I've got two widths. You know when you come to a project and you think, do I really need to buy a whole new piece of wadding for this? And you don't, you know, you have to because actually you're missing like that much and it's really annoying. Uh, and actually you can see exactly the same wadding if you're someone that likes to use the same kind of wadding like me. Uh, and you're like, well, if only I could just join those two together. You can. You can, and $7.99 is much cheaper than buying a whole new packet of wadding. So basically what you do is you put the sides of the wadding flush together, and then you put this over the top, iron down gently, very gently, uh, maybe just activate your, um, your steam on there. So don't, you know, especially if you're working with a polyester, please be careful. But then it's all, it's all there. It's, just, it's like a sticky plaster on your, uh, on your quilt but it just blends it in beautifully. You don't know it's there. You don't feel anything. Um, so it, it's, not, it's not giving you anything lumpy under your quilt. You don't want that. Uh, but it's, and you can sew through it. Perfect. It is absolutely brilliant. So this is $7.99. Again, it's one of those things you go, yes, of course I need that. We always want to use our sash. We always want to use up those little bits as well. Now you can. Now you can, without having to spend a fortune on new wadding, now you can just use up your scraps. $7.99. RX EQ 71. Now we've got one that is slightly thinner as well. So again, again, personal preference. You know, I tend to go for the larger one because, you know, I feel it's a bit more secure. But then some of you are just very accurate and precise anyway, in which case this is absolutely fine. Um, 5 99 for your heat press batting tape. And that's two centimetres, three quarters of an inch wide. There we go. Either which way... Happy days, I would say. Oh, can we do my magnetic pincushion, please? Can we do this? Um, this will uh, amaze you. I am, I am messy. And I know you're all amazed, staggered, stunned by that. But uh, it is one of those things. I drop pins all over the place. Like I say, I've got dogs, cats, children, in no particular order. They're all there, reaching around the, the workroom. And I, and I need to be careful. I do need to be more careful with my pins. So this is a brilliant way. If I've dropped them or, you know, when you're, just, you're getting into the groove with your sewing, you're just taking your pins out and you're not really wanting to stop and then carefully place it back in your pin cushion. Don't have time for that. Then this is a brilliant way. So you can now just take them out, put them on your work surface, take them out, put them on your work surface, because then you can basically come and hoover up your pins. Because look at this. Whee! Done. And I sometimes just swoop this over my carpet as well, just to make sure that if I've dropped any, I've got them all up again. Brilliant. Do you want to see that again? Actually, do you know what? I've got some pins. I've got like a whole, a whole new packet of pins that I'm going to do it with. Now, uh, a pin. I thought all pins were created equal. Turns out, no. The pins first in the box. There they are. Now, in here, you've got 35, 5 gram, 0.4 mil glass headed pins. Uh, they are normally in the box, but not when I'm around. Um, so this is what happens. Glass headed pins, these are nice and fine too. Lovely, lovely fine pins. Glass headed, important. They're rust protected as well, but glass headed means that you can press over the top of them and they won't melt into your work like plastic headed pins. Um, and they're lovely and fine, uh, so they're not going to really mark your fabrics. Um, but when you get them, get your super, it's, they're super fine. And then look, they do come in a nice little box, but I don't want them in my box. I want them on there so they are ready to go. That makes me very happy. Magnetic pin cushion down the bottom. Do you know what? For less than a fiver, just scratch, you'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. My next step is to get more of these and then have my different types of width of pin 
in each of them. And, and then I'll feel like I'm really grown up. Uh, what am I doing next? Sorry, could you tell me? They're my super fine ones. Yeah, they're good. Then we've got yellow ones as well. Let me show you the yellow ones. There you go. You have a look at that while I take these off here. So again, in a nice handy little storage box. Get a magnetic pin cushion, it's great. Uh, but they do come in a nice little storage box. Again, glass-headed, really important to have your glass-headed pins. Um, you get 43 in there, they're 11.99. Glass-headed, so important so that you can press. And also yellow so that you can see them in your work as well. That's another important thing. You don't want to leave any pins in. Gosh, no, that would be very dangerous. So you can really see them. You really know that they're there. And uh, these are longer. They are not quite as fine, are they? They're fine enough not to damage your fabric. But if you're holding together several layers, then they are longer and a little bit sturdier. So, you know, there you go. And again, you're going to, that's going to be nice and visible in your project. Don't leave pins inside of it. Just don't leave pins anywhere. It's very dangerous. Now, oh, magic clips. Maybe you don't like using pins at all. Oh, that's absolutely fine. Oh, producer Hannah, we've got the little video that you did of this. Ah, uh, now, uh, we used these yesterday, actually. Very, very handy. Uh, here we are. These are the small ones. Let me put it back in the packet so you can see. I've just messed up the packet, producer Hannah, sorry. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. I'll get there. Uh, so we will, yeah, it will come to you in an unopened packet, looking slightly better than that. You get 12 in there, some green, so that, will, that you will get a non-opened, non-Natasha tampered with packet. That's my promise to you. They do not let me in the warehouse. It's fine. Um, now, on the back, gives you the very basics of how to use these. Basically, look at this, the edge of your foot on your machine can glide over the top of that so you don't have to take it out when you sew. How often do you get a little bit squiffy with your sewing because you have to take out your clips or you have to take out your pins because you don't want to ruin your machine? No, 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 the foot will just glide over the top. It's fabulous. Well, it's magic. It's magic. Do you want to see it in action? Here we go. This is producer Hannah's hands. And here she is gliding beautifully over the top. Now, let's be clear, she's not sewing over the top. The foot is gliding over the side. Now, the other thing about these is that they also have markers on them. So, you can tell on here, you've got, um, you've got a marker there and a marker there. And it tells me here that the one closest is a quarter of an inch and the other one is a half an inch. So you've even got those. So if you're putting your binding or something on, then you can use that as a guide as to how far in you're clipping and then how close you can sew and things like that. Um, but what this does have, which is great, is a tutorial online to show you how to use these to their best advantage. Because they're, you know, for a clip, they do quite a few different things. So very, very easy. That is your, there you go, on the top there. There it is, gliding over. And you see, look, that needle there, not going over the metal, just to one side. Precise sewing and no need to remove the clips. Excellent. Now, uh, bigger ones. Perfect free binding. We used the, what did we use the little ones for yesterday? Oh, for the zip, uh, for, the, um, for, the, for the zip insert thing. Um, 15.99 for your pack of 12. Big magic clips. There they are. They're big, exactly the same principle. These ones are just bigger. So you get a quarter of an inch, half an inch, and five eighths of an inch um, measurements on these. And if you want to watch the video, look, there's a little link there. Just pop that in, and it will show you how to use them safely at home. It's not a toy. There you go. I feel like we've been very health and safety aware today. What are we doing from the first hour, Shannon? Oh, quick reminder of the freezer pit. Oh, yeah, well, if we were talking health and safety, be careful, because this has got very sharp teeth there. But your freezer paper is, uh, is absolutely fabulous. I'll get it around the right way in a minute. There we go. 
Still lots of you have this in your basket, perfect for your applique, which, and actually Lisa did an amazing demo on, on how to quilt using your freezer paper, which I had no idea about. So watch that hour back. You can always watch it back on YouTube. Now, our next hour is with Lucy as well, and we are dealing with this quilt behind us. Lots of you have been asking all week about this. Where do I get it? Where do I get it? Where do I get that from? Here, we've got the complete kit for you. I think you are going to love it. Very, very excited. This is the first time that we've bought a Jen Kingwell design to wear. But here it is, absolutely beautiful. That is lawn, London lawn fabric in there. It's a beautiful weight, absolutely exquisitely printed, beautiful. So we've got a couple of photos to show that some of you have sent in your English paper piecing. Didn't realize so many of you were so amazing at it and really into it. And here it is, let's take a look. So this one is coming in. Wow, who's this from? Donna, this is her kaleidoscope English paper piecing top. The design came from today's quilter, oh nice. Very lovely. So she's learned so much through doing that. I think that is stunning. You should be incredibly proud of your, yourself. That is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at this one. This is from Colleen. Wow, a Valentine lap quilt. Um, and, you know, English paper beast. Beautiful. Beautiful. Loves a bit of hand sewing. Do you know what you need to watch next hour if you love a bit of EPP? Um, here's the thing. It's one of those restful, relaxing things. Both, both producer Hannah and myself have both really got into a, a bit of English paper piecing. Um, I, I, it, it's just lovely to do um so to be able to bring you a whole quilt bundle oh you're gonna love next hour oh you're gonna absolutely love it so you know obviously don't go anywhere for that make sure you check out your basket for whatever goodies you've popped in uh it is p and p just once per day your pp is just 2.95 pmp per day uh, check out on the rotating cutting mat as well that's been incredibly popular this hour um Oh, but do you know what? It just, it's all about the English paper piecing. Next hour with that beautiful quilt behind me. Yes, the time has finally come. Lisa will be back in just a few moments to show us how. See you in a minute. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. There are many ways you can watch Sewing Quarter. We are live every day on Freeview Channel 78 and online at sewingquarter.com from 8am till 12 noon. But if you've missed a show, don't worry, there are two easy ways to catch up. The first is through our website, www.sewingquarter.com, where we repeat that morning's shows throughout the day. On the homepage, you'll see our video stream. Click on the video to hear sound and see a list of the products that we have shown in that day's shows. The second way to catch up is on our YouTube channel. All our shows are kept on YouTube, so if you buy a product and want to see the demonstration again, you can. Go to www.youtube.com forward slash sewing quarter, where you'll find all our shows listed by date. Select your preferred date, then using the description beneath the video, jump to the hour you want to watch. Then you can pause, rewind, play and skip your way to the bits that you want to watch again. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. On Monday the 19th of March, we're joined by dressmaker Amanda Wyatt for two fabulous hours of fashion. At 9am, Amanda will make a stunning Vogue crepe tunic with matching trousers. The fitted tunic has front and back yokes in contrasting ivory and black crepe for a standout finish you'll be wanting to get your hands on. Then at 10am, Amanda will be back to give us plenty of useful tips on using sewing patterns. So sit back and relax as Amanda teaches us everything we need to know. 
So join us at 9am on Monday the 19th of March to see Amanda and her makes. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Spring is in full swing as we get gardening with Jess Entwistle this Friday the 16th of March. Jess is here to show us how to make her gardening bag, Neela and Banner, first seen in Simply Sewing magazine. These handy outdoor makes are just what you need to get you in the mood to venture back into the great outdoors after a freezing winter. The gardening bag is perfect to store away your tools and comes with plenty of useful pockets for storage. The Neela has a good amount of padding to protect your knees and your clothes from the elements. And the banner brings an inspirational message into your home with embroidered letters on patterned linen. So make sure you join Jess as she talks us through her gardening collection on Friday the 16th of March at 8am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. It's time to play what's in the box. Um, we, we've never done this before. We've never done an out of box experience, but when this came in from the warehouse yesterday, Patricia and Hannah and I both looked at each other and went, oh my word, that's so beautiful. This has been specially bundled for us. Uh, so our suppliers have gone, okay, you can have the fabric or you can have the, the instructions or you can have the English paper piecing templates or whatever. We, 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 no, we want everything. We want you to be able to get this home and know that you've got everything that you need uh, to make that gorgeous quilt that we've all been admiring all week going, wow, 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 it's absolutely stunning. So the quilt itself is a Jen Kingswell design. She is an Australian uh, designer. She, uh, she also designs fabric for Moda. She's very, very well known in the business, very well respected. She says that she's actually, she's been very lucky. She's had two careers in her life. Both have involved needles. She was a nurse and a midwife. And then uh, she now has her quilting shop down in Australia. Fabulous, stunning designs. This is um, Hexy Kisses. Isn't that beautiful? Now, here's the thing. You can machine sew this quilt or you can English paper piece it. We have never, ever in the history of Sewing Quarter bought you a quilt of this size to English paper piece, should you wish. And yet there's such a demand for it. We have seen so many beautiful photos that you've sent in of, uh, of stunning English paper piece quilts. Absolutely gorgeous. So when you buy today, what you are buying is your wadding, 100% cotton wadding. You are buying 13 and a half meters of London lawn fabrics, stunning weight, beautiful. You are getting 240 pre-cut hexes, 480 pre-cut triangles. You are also getting the templates to cut your fabric out with, um, and you're also getting instructions as to how to do all of this, uh, which is your Jen Kingwell. Now, elsewhere, they haven't bundled it like this. We asked for this specially for us, um, and so that's what's happened. It's a wonderful thing. We ask, we get it. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's, Oh, pro uh, producer Hannah, she's, she's been rummaging uh, through the internet and she said that it's easier to get the pattern, the Jen King in America, than it is in this country. So, and, and it was about sort of $15 or something, wasn't it? Just, just for the pattern alone in America. So, without further ado, can we have a drum roll or something? Just, you know, da -da 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 -da. there we go. This is how it is going to arrive to you. So just add thread and time, that's all. We've got some beautiful Aurifil threads as well, if you want those. But here it is. So when it arrives, this is what happens. This is the magic. So first off, laser cut for precision, 240 hexes. 480 triangles 
cut for absolute precision. And now these here, you might be wondering what these are. Uh, these are your templates so that you don't waste a, a millimeter of fabric. So you can cut your, uh, your fabric perfectly, safely done. OK. Um, so we've put that in there. We also have given you the instructions, which we've, we've you know, producer Hannah was rummaging around the internet, found it difficult to find in the UK, easier to find in, in, in the US. But, you know, we're not there, are we? We're here. And this is Jen Kingwell. And so she, um, she designs for, for Moda. She's very well known. Just beautiful. Now, this is already going in your baskets. I don't blame you. Can we see this from above? Have we got an above shot? Because this is just stunning. These are all the softest, most beautiful lawn, London lawn weight fabrics. We, you know, now, lawn weight fabric, obviously, it's a finer weight fabric. And uh, that means that you can get these beautiful prints because you can get that detail in there. Um, half a meter, 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 half a meter. Let me show you what that's going to look like. So this is going to be the size of each of those lawn fabrics there. And give you an idea of the width. You are getting a lot of fabric in here. 13 and a half meters, I believe. Isn't that beautiful? I aspire to have a country garden like that. Isn't that gorgeous? We won't, we won't unravel all of them, but let's go with the next one. Because, you know, I've got to fold them back up again. <laughs> let's be honest. ta -da! So there, you know, that's, that's what's starting to happen as soon as you open up this box. You've got these glorious fabrics waiting to be unraveled. And, and, and you can see, you can see, I mean, yes, it looks a little bit uh, messy, but you can see the drape. You can see the softness of this fabric when I, when I put it out like that. Because this is going to be beautiful. The vibrancy of the color, the detail in that color Absolutely stunning. There you go. Right, now, so, oh, hang on. I didn't spot that in there. Now, this is going to be the joy, of course, because you're going to be able to go, right, maybe I want that bit. And, and you can kind of fussy cut into it. So half meter, half meter, half meter. Then um, this one here, it, should we? Ba, ba, ba. This one here you get more of. This is going to be your little triangles. And this one here, you're getting 1.4 meters of. Okay? So 1.4 meters of that fabric. So this is why I've had it bundled for you, so that you've got everything that you need. So that's just for your, your triangle bits, the lighter colored ones. Uh, there are only lighter colored triangles, aren't there? Now, so many of you on the lines going for this. Now, I'm, I'm not going to unravel this because there is 8.4 meters of your backing. It's also bound in this as well. Uh, what a beautiful, beautiful fabric this is. Uh, so this is a very lovely, lightweight cotton. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. What a gorgeous soft grey. Absolutely stunning. So this will do your diamonds as well. So this is your diamonds, your backing, and your binding. So do we, are we unravelling? Seriously, we're not going to unravel all this. But there is 8.4 metres of this in your kit. Massive, massive amounts. So this is all coming in your lovely big box. Oh, that's 8.6. The other is 1.4. So you're getting 13 and a half meters in total in this kit. Um, that lovely long weight. Now, this is the other joy, is that you are also getting 100% cotton your wadding. 
yeah, a big old, big old piece of it. Um, producer Hannah's got the dimensions for me. 90 by 120 inches. Let's switch over to inches for that. Um, but there it is. And that is lovely. So you've got that beautiful cotton all the way through. Like we were saying earlier, you know, this is, someone said the other day, you know, <sighs> large quilts, do we still make large quilts? Yes, we still make large quilts. There's a time and a place for a large quilt. There's a time and a place for a little quilt. Today is the large quilt. Yes. Um, now, when I say large, I mean a finished size of 168 centimetres by 215 centimetres or 66 inches by 85 inches. And you have everything you need, even down to the piece, paper piece, pieces. You don't have to reuse them. You can. But if you've done paper piecing before, then you'll know the brand that this is from, they're laser cut for absolute perfect perfection. All right, do you know what? Let's see what Lucy's got to make of this. Hello, Lucy. Hello. How are you doing? All right. How incredibly exciting. So exciting. When I got that box, I was like jumping. <laughs> do you have a little, a, little, a little moment? Yeah, I'm a big, big Jen Kingwell fan. I love her designs. I think she's just genius. And this is incredibly beautiful fabric. Now, full instructions coming with this. So many of you have already checked out on this, so just well done for that. Be aware if you've, you're sitting with it in your basket. It is going to be one of those things, um, you know, first come, first serve on this. Now, you've got templates included, but to cut back your fabric so that you don't... I, you don't like waste. I don't like waste. Do you no. like waste? No. 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 Um, take the backing off. These were, the, these were the brown things yeah. in, in here. Lucy's taken hers out. Uh, take that ba bra bl bl brown backing off. I can talk, I promise. There we go, I'll put them <laughs> against my top there. And, um, and you have the exact sizes that you need. These are your templates. Dog ears of off on there, you know, perfect for your English paper piecing. They will work with all. So you have 240 car cardboard English paper piecing pieces that are that bit, and then that adds your seam allowance on. So let, let's show. For example, here we go. So, and, and the joy of it, of course, being, look, you see, when that's on there, you can see that's the size. But there you go, look at that fabric. It is stunning, isn't it? It is beautiful. I have always thought that lawn weight fabric mm -hmm. um, would work nicely for your English paper piecing because it's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit lighter, isn't it? Yes, I use it a lot in my English paper piecing because, I, I, yeah, I love it. I mean, you can, you can machine sew with it as well, of course, um, but it is really beautiful for, for English paper piecing. And it's not... I know some people are a little cautious of lawn occasionally, um, but this is a really, really beautiful quality... Um, it it just feels very soft. That's it's not it, slippy. It? No. It's not like a shiny, you know, it's just very, very soft. Well, it is still 100% cotton. That mm -hmm. is still what we're looking at. Now, you see, when I think um, lawn weight, I always think of Liberty. And it, it, yes. it, it is a little-esque, it would be fair to say. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, look at that. I mean, how beautiful is that so three and a half meters of the lawn of these beautiful printed lawns and the print quality is out it's phenomenal isn't it standing and the colors too it really is look at that and the drape stunning where do we start with this and the Liz? can we just show like the colors in this oh that look do you know what i'm colors. not even oh i mean that is absolutely it's incredible because I'm there mad about that pink. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yeah. No, see, this is the thing, isn't it? Because then you can go and you're like, right, I want to have that bit highlighted. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that you can really, really, we talk about fussy cutting, but you can really yeah. get involved with that here, can't you? Maybe you just want and to... And you've got that template then. That's the two-inch hexagon acrylic template that you can it's then cute. use 
forever. That makes them easy to kit that never runs out. Yes, it's always there. And also, um, you can reuse um, your. You do templates. get more of that fabric, by the way. That's the you one just that I've a been chop into it. Yeah. Um, these are the templates. No, that's no, th the that's template. the template that Sorry. comes with it. So it's a, it's a, it's the perfect weight, isn't it? Because yes. it's not too stiff. No, nope. um, it's not card. But it's a good weight paper. And you can reuse it. But you don't have to within this quilt because you have enough to never have to take any out to reuse. No. Lucy, let's get going. That's my test. I'm just going to... Hear that? Yeah. That's a good That's weight. It. Yes. Yeah, I like that. So um, there are different ways that you can put this together. Okay. So you can machine sew it. And the pattern, Jen's pattern is written as a machine pieced quilt. Okay. So the one behind me was machine pieced mm -hmm. um, and the instructions in there are for machine piecing it okay so um the template that is in the pattern is a different size from the papers right okay because you've got your seam allowance you've got a quarter inch seam allowance if you're machine piecing mm -hmm. it and if you are English paper piecing it, the acrylic template has a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Which so you've got a little bit handy. more room. Yeah. Yes. So just I just want to make that clear. The template that's in the pattern is not the same as if you were English paper piecing it. Okay. Okay. So if you are I'm going to start by telling you how you would machine piece it. Okay. And then I will move on to English paper piecing. Just so everybody's got the options. Do you know what I might do? If I didn't have the time to English paper piece the whole thing, what I might do is machine that, but then use my templates with anything I had left over yes. to English paper piece and matching cushions yes. or something like that. So I'd had the joy of both. Absolutely. It's not an either or situation here. Right now. Well, and you, can, you could do, you can make both. Yeah. That's, or do half and half. You can do whatever you like. So I'm going to talk you through the machine piecing. So it comes with um, full instructions and you need the hexagon template that's in the pattern right. if you're machine piecing it. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So then you either want to, I've just photocopied it um, onto a piece of paper so that I can cut it out. You could put this on to um, template plastic if you to wanted you, to. Yeah. It's entirely up to you. So um, all of the measurements and the cutting instructions are in the pattern but i'm going to talk you through most of it anyway okay so if i'm going to um machine piece it what i'm going to do i'm going to just draw around this template because i don't want to cut i don't want to use a rotary cutter with the paper so i'm just going to draw around oh not on the paper lucy mm -mm. just draw around the template and then what you can do you can cut more than one at once by just stacking up Right. The fabric. Okay. And if you're after a pencil that is, is like this, is the mechanical pencil, it's really handy because it's so accurate, so perfect for this job. Um, then the pencils are down there. We've got different colours on the website. There's a pink one there. You're using the, uh, the, the normal sort of leaded one, uh -huh. uh, but there are different colours depending on what fabrics you, you think you're going to be using. So then I'm going to cut that out. I'm, I'm going to use the um, rotary cutter because I like it. Of course you can. <laughs> yeah, and I can just maintain that accuracy then. So, but you could, I mean, you could use scissors, but obviously if, if, I, was, if I was making this at home, I could be stacking up fabrics, do the one that I've drawn or use, um, you know, the template I've created yeah. to then cut out. So you're cutting out more than one at once. But just for demo, I'm just yeah. doing one. And, um, you know, if you bought your rotating cutting mat earlier, then already... See how useful it is. That's so useful. And round we go. So if I'd have stacked up fabrics, I could have done maybe four at once or yeah. whatever you feel comfortable. I mean, because it's lawn, it's even finer, so you could probably nice. do a few more than that. Okay, so that's my hexagon then. Beautiful, right. Okay. And then we need to cut the um, triangles. Right, okay. So the triangles, you're just cutting a two and a half inch strip mm -hmm. and you can use this um, with the acrylic templates as well if you're English paper piecing. I'll show that later on. But if you're machine um, piecing it, this, this is yeah. what we're creating. Okay. 
Yeah, so uh, it, all of those hexes, I don't know where, all of these hexes have got these, these little triangles. So you're going to be cutting a lot of these. Yeah. Around 480. So the way that it's constructed is you have the hexagon shape and you have a triangle top and bottom. Okay. Okay. And you make four of those and then you sew them into a diamond. Oh, nice. There is, it's all straight line sewing. Okay. Because you then put the diamonds into rows. Oh, nice. So while it looks like you've got all of those angles, it's actually, if you look at it that way, just straight lines. So that's how you're constructing it. So it's so a hexagon with the two triangles, top and bottom. You make four of those and sew them together to create the diamond. So it's very, very simple. And then, you know, it's lovely, isn't it? Because it, it does, it does then show you the next step as well. We yes. jump ahead. We jump ahead. Sorry. That's okay. So you will need a ruler that has a 60 degree angle on it. Okay. Most of the creative grids rulers have that mm -hmm. 60 degree yes. um, line. So I'm just using that um, to cut out my triangles. So now you might, you might sit there and say, mine doesn't, mine only has 30 degrees and 60 degrees, um, 45 degrees. The 30 degree is also your 60, 60 degree. degree. Yes. You know, I, I've, I've had people go, well, mine hasn't, mine hasn't, has it got 30 degrees? Yes. Well, then that's 60 degrees because it's, it's adds up to your 90 degrees. Da -da -da. Uh, this so, one is the 12 and a half inch, sorry, Lucy, by uh, six and a half inch. We had this on the earlier show. If you're after that, just this is, this one works with it. It's a really handy size as well, just generally speaking. So I have already um, been cutting this, but I'm just going to show you if this was my straight edge mm -hmm. for that first cut, I'm just lining up the 60 degree angle. Mm -hmm. That's that. It's that white. Can you see that? It's a white line there. So I'm just going to line that up with the edge of the strip, mm -hmm. and then just make a cut. Okay. And that's going to be my first cut. And then from there, I'm just going backwards and forwards to cut um, triangles. Right. So. God, let me have a think about it. I, oh, I'm, gla I'm really I glad know, that always, you have I to do this do. too. There, I'll do it that way. That's easier. Um, so again, just lining it up. And I'm going backwards and forwards. Nice, along all the way along. To cut out the triangles, okay? And that's the exact shape that you need for machine piecing. Oh, that's easy. That's easy. So it's just the two shapes. Mm-hmm. And then for machine sewing, I'm just, I'm going to do top and bottom. Yeah. And because it's a triangle and it has got dog ears. Yes. We need to make sure that that's overlapping. So okay. right sides together mm -hmm. along one edge of the triangle. And what I want is the little points overlapping at the same distance either side. It should be a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Right and it? that's going to give me my seam. So when I start sewing, my needle is here to create that quarter of an inch. So where those two cross. Where those two cross. So it's, it's almost giving you a little arrow to say, start here, start here. Yes, and exactly the same at the other, okay. at the other side. Okay. All right. So you can use um, your quarter inch foot or a quarter inch setting on your machine. What length stitch are we using on this? 1.8. Okay, all right. Let's find my foot pedal. <laughs> We will show the English paper piecing way in a moment. Uh, we wanted to give you a choice. Um, the instructions that it comes with shows you how to do and gives you the templates so that you can machine it. Uh, we have also included in your pack so that you have the choice, the templates so that you can English paper piece it as well. So um, because we didn't know which one you prefer, so we put in both. And also it might be that you want to do a mixture or like I said earlier, you know, it might be that you want to machine stitch the majority of it and then maybe do some matching cushions, which are English paper piece. It, it, the choice is yours. You know, I can't second guess what you love at home. So we, we want to give you that choice. So, and also you're going to be able to use these time and time again and, and make the most of this gorgeous fabric. I think that's the key here, isn't it? Is that you're getting the correct amount of fabric, yes. the fabrics that work. We've already seen the effect of all of those together and how stunning they are. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So I've just done that top and bottom. So yep. I'm just going to give that a press. You can press um, either or, really. Okay. Towards the hexagon or away from the hexagon. If you press towards, I'm going to show you both. You press towards the hexagon, you don't have 
dog ear. Oh, see. If you oh, press so you away to, to trim off. Yeah, if you press away, you've got dog ears. Oh, well, I think that's so if just. If you press uh, towards, you don't. I think that's just decided that one then. Yeah, and also because that's going to be the, you know, you want the print really to stand out. You, but I mean, up to you. However you want to do it. So then, and you could do some one way, some yeah. the other way. So then you repeat that four times, and that's going to make up your. Oh, lovely. Thing. So then you would be putting these pieces together, and again, you're just going to have that small overlap of the triangle tips mm -hmm. at either end as a guide when you're putting it together. So in your instructions, it shows you how to put those four together. And we'll see that in the, in the quilt. You can see it there in the quilt, you know, each of those. Now, does and it I'm matter? I'm not pinning, which probably wasn't a sensible idea, but it'll give you an idea anyway. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, it's kind of a show of two halves, isn't it? Because it part is. of it is machine, part of it is English paper piecing. So you can choose. That's the beauty of this kit. When you get it home, you, you have the, the knowledge that you can choose. You might want to start off English paper piecing and then swap it midway, it doesn't matter. Um, and you've got instructions for both, which is really lovely. And uh, so lots of opportunity there. And also, uh, you've also got your 100% cotton wadding beautiful mm -hmm. all of that in there and 13 and a half meters of fabric lovely there you go just add your thread so you do another two of those and sew them together okay and repeat repeat repeat, repeat. lovely that's it so does it matter which colors i put where no i don't think it matters at all i've just put two greens very um close together i think in the grand scheme of things it doesn't really matter um, Jen Kingwell um, is great at mixing fabrics up together and she really encourages people to, um, you know, experiment. And she doesn't specify no. where to put each of these floral lawn fabrics, which no. I think is very freeing, mm -hmm. actually, and very lovely, because she knows that with this, and especially with this kit, you can't go wrong with the mix of colours. They, they all work. I remember someone saying to me that, you know, your quilting can be like a garden. You know, necessarily the colours won't be exactly the same, but if the general effect is beautiful, which this is, it doesn't matter where those plants go. No, and you can, I mean, you... You could plan it out, but, I'd, but I think having the mix is what makes it, yeah. in a way. I think if you were too precise about it, you know, and they all work together. But they also, like it doesn't say, matter. They all work together. So and actually, the beauty of it is, is that your quilt is going to be individual to you. There mm -hmm. won't be another one like it. And you wouldn't, you know, if you're looking at this quilt and there may be two that are similar next to each other, but it doesn't. You don't look at it and go, oh, those two are next We've been to looking other. at you this all week, that. and at no point has that jarred. No. You know, it, it is just, it's just been stunning to look at with different things to look at. It's beautiful. Oh, it's just, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and you have as well. You know, your message about this quilt, absolutely lovely. What you can do once you've made all your blocks is lay them out. And Jen says that in the pattern. So if you have a design wall, like if you have a piece of wadding on your wall that you can can lay them out and then you can move them around if you so desire um personally i would just sew them all and yeah. whatever will be will be but i know some people prefer more order oh hang on sewing. how about your freezer paper and then you could when you know the design layout that you want you can just press them on there so that it, it stays on you could and that's i've seen some designers yes, do that um, with their english paper piecing so that they know then exactly where they're going to yeah. place what it's entirely up to you we're halfway through should okay. we swap to english paper yes piecing? i'll just very quickly one of the things she does say in the pattern is you could pin them all to a sheet oh and then you can you've got them then in place yeah so as you're sewing each bit they're going to stay where they are well, i thought that's a, yeah. a good tip so um Okay, I'm, I'm going to do the diamond section first, the larger diamond section, just to show you how to cut those out. So again, you're just working with a long strip and you're using your 60 degrees on your ruler. Mm -hmm. So you want at this point, ideally, to have um, a slightly bigger ruler. 
they're slightly bigger and then the loose has gone Just all out. Slightly bigger. <laughs> And then I'm going to line up, again, line up that 60 degree. I don't think I've cut this fabric very well, but just for demo. Um, so you're just creating that. And then I believe it's seven and a half. Seven and a half. Can we just yeah. check? I think it is. Uh, hang on. Hang on one moment. I think you're right. I do think you're right. I remember reading that yesterday somewhere. And of course, now I can't yeah, find it. there it is. It's oh, you found it. Got it. So what you want to oh, do, yeah. I'm going to just budge you up, is just line this up Whoop. on your mat so that your 60 degree edge that you've just cut is mm. lined up with the edge of your mat. Mm -hmm. You find the seven and a half line and then you just cut Oh, the seven and a half line on your mat. The seven and a half line on your mat. Again, make sure you've got a cutting mat. Well, you can do it seven and a half with your ruler. Oh, yeah, you have, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. If you've got a wide enough ruler, that's fine. And then you just... And that's your shape. That's it done. That's it done. Wow, so many of you absolutely loving the quilts. Uh, lovely messages, thank you. Um, we're we're going to focus really on Lucy making this, uh, but we will read your messages. Thank you ever so much. So once you've done your shapes, can you see that's how the rows are going to be ah, um, built up? Very nice indeed. And you can see how straight away it starts getting yeah. big. <laughs> really quite big. Quite big. quick, yeah. Yeah, from little pieces. Because that's the thing, isn't it? When you look at it, you think, oh my goodness, if I'm English paper piecing, all of that is going to take me forever. But because half of it is those large, is those large ones, it does come together once you get going more quickly. So it does. let's look at this English paper piecing because you do get all of your, every single one of your templates laser cut, ready to go, if you wish to go that way. I would. <laughs> you would? Yeah. Put some of that in there. I would yeah, do it by hand. Yeah, why not? Um, but it's, you know, it's whatever your preference is. There's no right or wrong. And the, the quilt was designed to be um, machine piece, but then, hurrah, we've got um, paper pieces have created this wonderful kit so that you can, if you would prefer, do it, do it by hand. So I'm going to get rid of that one because I'm going to confuse myself. Okay. I don't okay. think we've ever bought a quilt with that option before to wear. I'm racking my brains. I can't remember where we've ever given you that option of here's a quilt. You can either machine it or you can English paper piece it. It's brilliant. Well, there's not that, you know, that's not something that happens very often, but obviously there's a demand for people wanting to hand sew it as well, and that's why they've created this additional yeah. kit. So I that don't think any of us actually appreciated just the demand for English paper piecing. Mm. So do you check out your baskets. Everything that you need, apart from the thread, is in there, and you're good to go. I love English paper piecing because it's portable. I'm travelling quite a lot. You are. So I get to do it on the train, which is nice. Um, you know, you can carry it with you um, if you're going on holiday or something, or if you're just going to visit a friend or a relative, you can just, you can always take a bit of sewing it's with you. It's manageable as well, isn't it? Manageable. You could just, you could just take enough to be able to do one of those. Mm -hmm. Why sit in the hairdressers in there? Because, mm -hmm. you know, apparently, occasionally, I actually get it done. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's just, it's that little bit of me time or when you're watching the TV or something like that. It's, it's really doable. Absolutely. Right, show us this then. Okay, so the wonderful thing about this, I, lo I do love English paper piecing, but the preparation is not my favourite part of it. Cutting out all of the pieces can be quite time consuming, but that's where having acrylic templates is incredibly useful. Okay. So you can, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. Okay. You see, I love this bit now. I know. Not I love you. it with the template. I, <laughs> I just don't love it. If you don't have a template, that's when it's not so much fun. So I'm going to focus on this one because that's my favourite. Oh, is it? Yes. So you can either, if you don't like using a rotary cutter, because I know some people don't, if you don't like using a rotary cutter, draw around the edge of the acrylic template and you've got the right size fabric to use with your papers, okay? Okay. If you're happy using a rotary cutter... I am now, yes. It's going to make life easier and quicker, but you don't have to. Okay. So 
I'm going to use the acrylic template and you'll notice that the writing is upside down. That's because this is etched. Okay. This text is etched into the, sorry, grubby fingerprints, um, etched into the acrylic. So that's going to act as a little bit of grit. Oh, okay. okay. Nice. Oh, nicely thought out. Okay. So then I can use, and I, this is where the rotating cutting mat comes in incredibly handy mm -hmm. again. I just can trim this with my rotary cutter. It's one of those things. It's not necessary, but when you have one, yes. um, I was going to say, by Jove, you are going to absolutely love it and just wondered why you bothered before, uh, you know, how, how much easier this makes the job. Yeah much quicker and English paper piecing of course is not about speed it's not about doing something really quickly but the the quicker I can get to the sewing the happier the you happier are I am. so the so. template's also giving you the perfect amount of fabric for folding over the edges uh, yeah. so this is this is where Patricia Hand says she's falling down she's she doesn't have these well she's yeah get it all in your kit here and this is again this is a three eighths of an inch seam allowance which most English paper pieces prefer to have just that you know, that eighth of an inch so fraction normal more. normal quilting, we'd look at a quarter of an inch, but mm -hmm. that three eighths, that extra little bit, just means you've got that, that little bit extra as you fold over, that little bit of extra leeway, really. Yeah. And then, joy of joys. You can use the acrylic, the um, triangle acrylic template. Mm with that same strip I used, mm. so it's the same size strip. So that was a strip. two and a half inch strip, so if you've got yeah. your stripology, happy days actually, as well. Sorry, excuse me reaching, I'm gonna put it there on this mat. Um, so again, you can use that strip to cut this. Do you cut those dog ears off as you go? Yes. Oh, nice. So as I'm cutting these out, mm. I'm just, that's why I grabbed this mat, because it's easier to just turn it around, there we go. And how accurate do I have to be with my cutting? Um, when you're English paper piecing, not massively. You don't need to worry too much about seam allowances, but in this pattern, you do, and I'll 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 come to that. Okay. Um, you know, you do and you don't, but you're better giving yourself a little bit um, more room rather than not giving yourself enough, like okay. Hannah has found out. Uh, <laughs> To her cost. Maureen says, thank you, Lucy and Natasha. I always worry that blocks don't look right when putting a quilt together. I now feel better about just going for it. Maureen, do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a girl that just goes for it. Yeah, I, I really love that. Because the confidence here is that the fabrics have been chosen, that they go, uh, that you've got the different size prints as well that's, mm -hmm. that's going to work beautifully. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you can absolutely go for it. Go yeah, for it, you can. And yeah. there's really no... You really can't go wrong in any, you know, however you decide to combine it. And if you did want to have maybe the darker prints towards the center of the kisses and the greener ones going oh towards, gosh, wow. you, know, you, you know, can you can be more precise with it if you if you want to be. But I I like those sewing projects that are really freeing, that don't have a lot of rules. And I like an organic scattering. Yes, I love yes. that. So it yes. looks, you know, effortless. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, I've cut out some hexagons and I've got my triangles. So then I'm going to take my paper and you can see how perfectly oh, nice. that's going to fit there. And then I'm going to pin that into place. And then I'm going to glue base. Yay! Because that's my favourite thing to do. And me. I that's love it. Absolute favourite. You can, yeah. of course, thread base. Of course you can. If you want to. Of course you can. But I don't. I don't either. I do on occasion, but not very often, because the glue is just so quick and easy. So just a few little dabs of the glue, but really pressing it over with your fingers to get that nice crease. And you want to make sure you get hit those corners just yeah. there. Now, Soline developed this glue specifically for English paper piecing, and it was a bit of a revelation when it first came onto the marketplace. Like, whoa, hang on, why? It's one of those simple things. Why did nobody ever think about this? This is a non permanent glue, it goes on blue, dries clear. When it's clear, you know it's dried. So you've got that time frame um, whilst it, it starts to fade, knowing that it's wet. Yep. Um, Thing. But you can peel it off again. So this is why it's, you can then reuse these templates because you haven't damaged them in any way, which is absolutely perfect. Where um, people occasionally go wrong is using too much glue. Yes. So if you're having to rip out your paper, 
and the, there are bits of paper, you know, stuck in. You've used too much glue. Yeah. So it less shouldn't, is more. It here. shouldn't be. It shouldn't be damaging the the paper. So Whilst you, you do another one of those, yeah. and that's perfect. And can I just show you very very quickly the front there, just how perfect those edges are. All done, perfect. I'm going to go and show you the bundles whilst you okay. do another one of those. I'm just going to say those. one thing very quickly. Okay, go on. You can see as I'm doing this, I'm keeping it flat. Right. And that's what's going to give you that nice, you know, pressing it in as you fold and keeping it nice and flat so that, that you haven't got any excess fabric on the front there. I do this on a tray on my lap while there watching TV. Lovely. Right, here we go. This is your box. This is what will be arriving. Can I just say as well, P&P, &P, just two ninety five. Whopping great big box here. Um, these are your beautiful fabrics. This is all about your London lawn weight fabric. So uh, for those of you that have already checked out and bought, well done, congratulations. You can sit back and relax. So half a meter of each of these. Now this is Jen Kingwell's design. She's a designer for Moda, so you know, she really understands her fabrics. She really understands how fabrics need to go together and the colorways that really work. And, and these fabrics, just absolutely exquisite. They are all lawn weight, which is really lovely. And I've always thought, you know, lawn weight for hexes, for your English paper piecing, how perfect. You have a choice. Um, so you've got half a meter of each of those. Mix and match them however you want or, or be uniform with them. It's entirely up to you. It's designed so that the colors go, the prints go, the different sizes complement. You've got larger designs, you've got ditsies in there, you've got everything. The bundle has been specifically put together so that it works for you effortlessly and you don't have to worry about it. So you don't have to be an expert in putting colors or anything together. Put them however you wish and you have that nice relaxing freedom as Maureen just said, you know, this is great. I don't need to worry about it, absolutely not. Now, this has been bundled exclusively in the UK for us, uh, which is really lovely for sewing quarter. We asked to have specific things put in because we didn't know if you wanted to machine sew it or if you'd want to English paper piece it or if you wanted to mix it up. Um, so the instructions, Jen's instructions come for machine sewing with templates for machine sewing. But the way that it goes together will be done exactly the same, but if you English paper piece, obviously you will use these templates instead, and also you will use those uh, acrylic templates for all of your cutting as well. But you, don't, you have enough of these that you don't ever need to take them out and reuse them. You can reuse them afterwards, of course you can, but you don't have to. You know, you've got that choice. So you've got all of those laser cut to perfection ready to go. So half a meter of each of these, and then you get, now let me get this the right way around, this is 1.4 meters of your spot. Now this is gonna be all of those little triangles. All 480 of those little triangles will be cut out of this. Now this has been put exclusively together with these fabrics for us as well in the UK here for us. Um, so, you know, you're getting something a little bit spe a little bit special, incredibly special. Let's not underdo this. I mean, it is absolutely stunning. 8.6 meters. So many of you already know how special it is. You've been admiring it all week, telling us how special it is and when can you get it. Today, absolutely today. 8.6 of this lovely soft gray backing fabric, binding fabric, and also those large diamonds also in this fabric. That's why you're getting 8.6 meters of that. And then you're also getting all of your wadding, cotton wadding, beautiful soft cotton wadding. So it's all gonna be absolutely exquisite. Um, this is gonna be, oh, hang on, the wadding is 90 by 20 inches. You're getting 13 and a half meters of fabric in total, plus your wadding, plus 240 um, hexes and 480 triangles, laser cut, ready to go, plus instructions for machining it and instructions as to how to put together English paper piece style. It's up to you. Here's everything you're getting in the kit. Woo. Now the fabric is a lawn weight, London lawn weight, and the quality of it is exquisite. The, the colors, the print, the designs, all working beautifully. Happy days. Happy days. I so love happy. this. I love it so <laughs> much. Uh, producer Hannah says, if it's in your myself. basket, please check out. So many of you have been oh. admiring this quilt all week. You will absolutely not regret it. And I, and I want to make it very clear, although I am a big fan of hand sewing, this is a beautiful one to machine piece. It isn't difficult. 
um, because of Jen's accuracy and the way the templates are created and how you're cutting out those shapes. You don't need any special rulers. You just need one that has a 60 degree angle on it. That's Which all you most, need. Which most, you know, rectangular rulers will have. Yes, your, well, the creative grids all do. And you will, most of them all do. Um, and you will have, you're using your ruler for the smaller triangles and the diamond pieces. Perfect. I mean, that's Done. it. So it, and it, Done. the way it comes together in those, it's just sewing long lines and it looks incredible. It, it really, really does. does. When you receive <laughs> this, stinks. which is, <laughs> Does that mean one of us can't speak? <laughs> uh, when you receive this in that nice presentation box, da -da -da, mm -hmm. open it all up, beautiful. All that you I need might to have gasp. <laughs> I did. I did. It's oh, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but when you get it home, all you need to do is add thread. Is decide what thread you want to use with it. Whether you're going to go old school cotton, uh, maybe. Yes, maybe yeah. treat yourself to an orifil, mm -hmm. um, or whether you know, that is your choice then. Um, but do sew it. Do do. Don't let it just sit there. No, don't. Do open it up. How? You are, How do we anybody do this that thing? gets this home, opens it up, and doesn't immediately start sewing? I Lucy, don't know. You we will, say there's you no will. quilting police, but we'll send Lucy around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How do we do this then? Okay, so I've just basted these shapes. I've just done them all because you know, fun. Um, so literally, just exactly the same way I machine piece. So I'm putting um, a triangle top and bottom. Mm -hmm. So I've threaded my needle. I have brought my um, thimble pads. Oh, I want some of these. Yeah. Now show us. This is, this, is, this is genuinely mine that I took from my sewing kit that I had with me because I sew on the train. Um, so you, yours come, you, you see where all those little spaces were? Those are the ones that I've used. <laughs> Um, yours come obviously with them all there mm -hmm. and it's um they're just sticky on the back now i've tried lots of different types of thimbles for for a, a while because i wasn't getting on with thimbles i sewed without a thimble and that's just Hurt. too hard on your fingers when you're doing a lot of hand sewing and um, you just end up with a big dent in your now finger. these are leather just so that you're aware um, mm -hmm. we do do a metal one version on the website as well for anybody that might not want leather uh, but these are leather these are also reusable ones we had someone message in saying that they when she takes it off her finger she puts it on a sewing machine so she always knows where it is mm -hmm. and she's reused it multiple multiple times so 949 um, and, and you get a lot in that packet because they last and last I stick mine on my daylight lamp. Oh, do you? So you yeah. know exactly where it is. Because that's next to the sofa, where okay. I sit when I sew. Perfect. So you literally just... Oh, it's so sticky. <laughs> you literally peel it off, the backing. I'm not going to show you on my um, plastered finger, but there you go. So it literally just sticks to your finger. That's not going anywhere. You see, because Doesn't otherwise... Come, won't come off. No. Thimbles don't... They're not the right size or shape or whatever for me. So this is, this is the perfect solution. Yeah. So I just, you have that on there and you can, you just peel it off, stick it back, peel it off, stick it back. You get it exactly where you need it. Now, because everybody sews slightly differently, where that point is on your finger, where the needle's is it attacking you? you is... So where are you going to put change. it? So I put it on my middle finger, which has got a plaster on it. So um, I, I keep it on my middle finger as I'm sewing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so... I've threaded my needle, I've put a knot in the end. I did the knot earlier. So, um, I mean, earlier in the other show, I showed you how I do my knots. So we're putting the pieces right sides together. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do a whip stitch. So the idea is that we're just gonna catch um, the very edges of the fabric, but we're not going through the paper. Now my needle here is thicker than what you know, mm. the one I would be using, but it's it's helpful so that you can see. So I'm just catching it at the very edges of the fabric, but not going through the papers. You, I, I don't know about you, but I find I get into a little bit of a rhythm with this. Yes, absolutely. And, and once you get the feel for what that actually feels like, you know, you just, well, I do. 
I just I just get going and I, I feel mm -hmm. like yeah no no and I know exactly where to aim and it just it feels right if there's yeah. too much effort that you're going through the paper you can actually feel if you go through yes, the paper you as can. well you um, can. so it is it is very easy and, and you'll hear stitches, it with this paper yeah. as well and I like to try and catch my tail so I'm sewing my tail. Oh, now in. did you say Hannah didn't know if you were meant to do that? So she's quite interested that you've done that. Yeah, well, I mean, you don't have to, but it just sort of keeps everything nice and no one's going to see it, are they? On the inside of your quilt, but it does just keep it nice and neat. Well, she thought it looked neater, but she stops it, it catching wrong. on anything, doesn't it? And you just keep going along. Now, I like to, and not everybody does this, some people might do two little stitches in the same place to help strengthen it. Right. For anybody who has had to unpick hand sewing, it's relatively easy. It's traumatizing, but it's relatively easy to just go through. We'll be honest here, yes. it's traumatizing. So yes. every few stitches, what I like to do is pull the stitch through, but stop when I've got that little loop. Mm -hmm. And I take my needle through the loop All right. to make like a tiny little knot. And I just do that every few stitches. And then if you do ever have to unpick, you'll notice that it's just a bit more difficult because you've got... So it's just giving you that little bit more security Yeah. that should ever your stitches come loose... It, there'll be a stopping point. There'll be a stopping point. So every few stitches, I just like to do that. Okay. Um, That's a great tip. How many stitches per inch is... Um, debatable in my opinion um there this is are again from them to personal preference yeah there are sort of rules and regulations um <laughs> but you can choose to ignore them at your will you you don't want to be go you know i don't want to jump from here to here right it's just going to be too big of a stitch but i don't need to do it right right next to that mm. stitch i've just sewn so just ever so slightly away and you will develop your own pace and your own acceptable level of how far apart your, your stitches are. But a lot of people do them very, very, very close. Mm. And you, you don't have to. You okay. can, you know. There is a middle ground. There is a middle ground. Where, so it's still secure. Wonderful. We've got seven minutes left. But you don't want to leave a big gap. Okay, I'll speed up. Now, if you're buying this today, please do check out your basket. Um, this is the first time we've brought a, a Jen Kingswell design to wear. Not only that, but we've also um, had it specially bundled for us here in the UK so that you get everything that you need. So that's specially put together fabrics, adding in uh, the instructions for machine stitching, adding in um, all of the templates if you want to English paper piece, the whole thing. So you have the choice, which is really, really lovely. Um, and then you're, you know, this, this is it. This is, this is everything you need apart from your thread and time, which is beautiful. So you're getting half a meter of each of those floral London lawn weight fabrics doesn't matter which way up you use them, they go together beautifully. That choice is yours. You get 1.4 meters of the spot for the, uh, for the triangles. For the diamonds, the backing, the binding, you're getting 8.6 meters of that backing fabric. So many of you know how special this is. Diana in Cumbria says, Morning, Lucy and Natasha. My husband is going to take my cards into protective custody. As yeah, long good as luck with that. It after you've yeah, after this. Quilt kit, we'll have to fun. fight you for it first. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I've come to the end and I just want to talk about finishing off oh, okay, because yes. it's the same as sort of starting. So you can, I do sew with a knot. So I do start with a knot, but not everybody likes to do that. If you don't want to start with a knot, you want to start a little way from the beginning, go back and then go back. So it's like back stitching. Do a few stitches backwards and then go over the top. Some people are happy okay. about doing that and that's fine. I, either way. Right, but somebody you, you has need asked. to secure it. Yes. Um, there's a couple of questions, actually. Mm -hmm. At what point do you take all the paper out? Um, you take the papers out after you've... You can take them out after you've sewn it to the next piece, but in the case of... Because of how it's constructed, you're constructing it in big rows. So you could do a few rows and then take some out from the middle and then add your other rows, um, but generally at the end. 
Okay. As, you, as you're sewing it, you'll, you'll see, but you never want to take the papers out on an edge that you've got to sew to yes. the next piece. So you want, you want that stability of that paper in the edge. That's really, really important. But as it grows, you can start to take them out of the middle to make it easier. And to... also, don't be afraid to fold these. You know, they are reusable. You can fold them to get them out of the way. That was yes. the other thing. Because my husband looked at when I was with my English paper piece, and you said, but... Uh, why, why is there paper in it? You know, that's not mm. going to be very comfortable. It's like, no, you take it out. It's mm. okay, you take it out. And it's very easy to do, especially if you've glue baited as well. Yeah. Um, Sally says, hi, what a stunning quilt. Any tips on how you would quilt such a large quilt on an ordinary sewing machine? Thanks. A good question. Okay, there are different opinions about this as well. Um, you, I budge. So I just push it. I just squish it all into this section here. Um, if you have a very narrow machine, that does become difficult, but you've got a nice flat cotton wadding, so you've not got a lot of um, Loft volume going on. there. Yes. Yeah, so that will make it easier. Um, and you might want to just focus on certain areas at a time. Okay. Don't, don't overwhelm yourself trying to, do, trying to do the whole thing. You can break it down and quilt it section by section. That makes it easier as And well. a question from producer Hannah. Who yes. wants to know, is she going to be hand stitching the grey, big grey diamonds onto yes. these? Yes, I'm going to show you how to finish this and then talk about that very quickly. So okay. to finish it off... We've only got minutes. Okay, I do a stitch in the corner and then a few back stitches. And then I just do the same knot technique of just pulling it through the loop. Yes. And that's how I finish it off. Okay. Okay, so if you are English paper piecing it, when you come to... Um, sew the pieces together you don't have a paper template for the big diamond can you make yourself so you one? can make yourself one okay. it's going to be the it's going to need to be the same size as this finished pieces so use that almost as your as your template yeah or you can draw a quarter a quarter inch around that one mm -hmm. because that's cut for machine piecing so you can put a paper template in there don't be afraid of the fact that it's big uh, my friend Claire does huge, big pieces and when she's doing English paper piecing. So you can do it that way. The other thing you can do is open out the seams on this and trim it back to a quarter of an inch. So you're taking an eighth of an inch off all the way around the outside and then machine them together or hand uh, piece them without so the papers. You, you absolutely have the choice. So if you only wanted to English paper piece these bits and then machine everything else machine that the, the rows together, together you can do that then you could do that you know if that feels too much that's for you what I, that's probably is that that's what you what would, do? would do so it's 50 yeah. 50 which is why you've got the instructions for both uh, yeah. and then you can mix and, and then match. you've enjoyed all the relaxing part of the english paper piecing and then you've got a quilt like that and then machined um, it together it's done yeah. Love that, yeah. love that. Um, you're absolutely loving this quilt. Uh, Producer Hannah's in absolute ecstasies up, upstairs, you know, yeah. completely. Let's have a look at what we um, have got in the bundle. I'm going to go and do that now. Producer, um, producer, producer Lucy, I've just, yeah, you know, I, given you a career change. You never know, thank I might you. have a hidden talent. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you so, so much. Um, okay, let's investigate everything that we get in here. It comes in a very big box because you are getting an awful lot. So each of these are your London lawn fabrics. You are getting half a meter of these. They are 100% cotton, beautiful quality, gorgeous weight. Um, do check out if this is in your basket, says producer Hannah, that is her warning to you. It is only secured if you have checked out. If it's just sitting there, if someone rings up and they want it, it can be taken out of your basket. So just be aware, a lot of you going for this today with good reason. Uh, now, this is your 1.4 meters of your spot fabric. This does all of your little triangles, all 480 of your little triangles uh, will be done out of this particular fabric. You get 1.4 meters of that. You are also going to get, for those large diamonds, um, and also for the backing and the binding, 8.6 meters of this. It all feels so soft. I would unfold it all, but quite frankly, the studio is not big enough. Um, and then you're also getting your, your cotton wadding, which is beautiful. You're also getting, which is 90 by 120 inches. Um, you're also getting your instructions by Jen Kingswell so that you can machine stitch, should you wish. You might want to do a hybrid and do 50-50 because look, you could English paper piece all the beautiful lawn fabrics 
stunning, stunning quality fabrics. And then look, these are all laser cut, so you've got them absolutely perfect. And then these are your reusable templates. You can reuse all of this. Uh, you'll peel off the brown backing on that so that then you can, you can have the joy of fussy cutting these beautiful fabrics um, because you can use those templates. So it's 179.99. Make, make the most of this. It was made, put together for us here in the UK, here at Sewing Quarter. I will see you after the break. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Hello, my name's Jess Emmertal and these are my three top tips. My first top tip is number one, iron as you go. Always press because you will never regret it, but you always will if you don't. Top tip number two, use small stitches. The smaller the stitches, the stronger the join in your fabric. Tip number three, it's only fabric. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Start again or change your direction. Sewing so Quarter have an exclusive, amazing price for our viewers on the Elner Expressive 920 sewing and embroidery machine. This ultimate machine is the perfect investment to help you enjoy sewing, quilting and embroidery like never before with a range of impressive features to help you every step of your project. This ultimate machine is the perfect investment to help you enjoy sewing, quilting and embroidery like never before with a range of impressive features to help with every step of your project. This top of the line machine truly has the wow factor with an embroidery speed of 1000 stitches a minute and a large hoop size making embroidery a breeze. The high resolution touch screen allows you to create your own stitches and designs and it also has an automatic needle threader for ultimate ease. The machine also includes 10 fonts for monogramming 13 one-step buttonholes and a variety of over 400 stitches, you'll be spoilt for choice. It also has an expansive bed space to allow for quilting and larger makes to make it the machine you can't live without. Elner Expressive 920 sewing and embroidery machine means you won't be able to wait for your next make. Head over to our website to find out more about our amazing exclusive price on this fabulous machine. On Saturday the 17th of March, tune in and join master quilter Victoria Peat as she makes a beautiful farmhouse quilt designed by Lynn Goldsworthy. This Red Village farmhouse quilt is made from gorgeous rich red fabric and floral creams and is adorned with quaint quilted houses. Victoria will be showing us how to make this quilt using foundation paper piecing and two interlocking blocks. We've got everything you need to make this quilt with all the fabric, wadding, backing and binding included in a handy bundle. So sit back and relax as Victoria gives you all of her tips and tricks for this stunning mate. So get ready to start quilting on Saturday the 17th of March at 9am only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news, and share your own creations with us. Hello, welcome back. Gosh, what a stunning quilt. Thank you, Lucy. I mean, just... But absolutely stunning. It's been joyful, actually, just to have it here all week. Really, really beautiful. Um, there it is. So if you want to have that exclusive bundle, 179.99. We've done the hard work. We've sourced everything for you. We've put it all together. We've given you the choice. Machine sew, English paper bees, do a hybrid of the two. It's exactly right and it's exactly up to you. We have never brought you an English paper piece quilt of that size and magnitude to wear, dot, 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 ever, but you've been asking for it. There it is. Hurrah. Nice. 
Now, um, let's go traditional. I, I, I think what we do um, really well here, actually, uh, just you know, to blow our own trumpet here, is a variety of fabrics to suit all tastes. We're all different. We all know what we love. Uh, we all have different homes that we're making for or different people that we're making for. Uh, and so it's really important for us that we bring you a vast array uh, from your traditional to your modern to your quirky. I think we bring you know, a, a taster of everything. So this hour is very traditional based. I've got the Devon County fabrics for you for in just a moment. But what we've now introduced into our core range. So out in our office, we have a core range of fabrics that we like to keep in stock all of the time. It's all Macau, it's all 44 inches selvage to selvage, it's all 100% cotton, you can wash all of it. Uh, we started when we first came to air over a year ago with, um, with the Spectrum Solids, which are our solid fabrics that you'll see us mix through with other colours, make your, your, um, your beautiful fabrics go further, um, but all that lovely quilting quality weight. So that was where we started with Macau. We soon realised that actually textures were really important to you. So then we bought you the linear and the linen look, um, and they added into our stable and the, the different colorways and, and all of that, we added that in. The next step was the Bijou range. And the Bijou range, uh, uh, well, it's been, it's been absolutely incredibly popular. We're waiting for it to come back again. We can't show all of the bundles that we normally like to put together because it's on reorder and it will be back in. Um, but it is a, a selection of ditzy prints, um, not in your face, they're very subtle and they're in the most beautiful tones of colourways to suit that traditional need. So when you want to add in something that isn't just a flat plain colour, that isn't just you know one solid colour, you want a little bit of interest but you don't want too much. Maybe you've done something like the Devon County and you've bought that fabric so you want that to be your main event but you want something that isn't a stark um, plain you want something that is a little bit softer and again this is looking at bringing in a different ditzes um, but also bringing in a very soft palette a very traditional palette um, and that's what I, I see when I look at this is, is beautiful traditional colors that's going to work in so many homes so this is the berry range um, I remember when producer Hannah and I first launched this they are incredibly tiny ditzies and trying to work out which was which was incredibly difficult. So let's have a look and see if we can do here. So all of these are your berry tones, half a meter of each. So I've got um, bloom heather in there. I've got masala within your bloom as well. So they're your two blooms. That's your, um, hang on, I've got another bloom in there as well. I've got a bouquet and lilac. I've got a raisin with the sole. This is your raisin up here. I've got the V cherry there. I've got your square dot on your French rose down here. They all have wonderful names. It's a very tasty bundle. Um, it, it's just it's, it's lovely soft colorways. We will always reorder it. It is on reorder. Two of our colorway bundles, the blues and the greens aren't available. I've got other ones. Now this one is in single figures. So again, if you are after this for a project that you're starting now, you don't wanna wait, or if you just need it in your stash so that you've just got it there, just be aware, we've only got eight of these left in the company until the reorder comes through. We will reorder. This will be part of our core range, but for now, this is what we have. So um, again, you, you might be partway through a project Maybe you've already bought your Devon County, you might be partway through and go, actually, I'd, I'd quite like some of this extra. Grab it today. QPGC77, and that is 29.49. But if I, you know, you can just see um, what it's bringing you is different tones, soft tones, like this one here, really beautiful. Uh, you've got that detail of your ditzy. It's, it's not overpowering, but it's giving you tonally a couple of different tones to play with within one fabric as well ever so pretty. So that is my berry blooms. Very lovely. Now that is my first bijou. And so that's the most limited of the bijous. So lots of you popping that in your baskets down to six already. Um, and again, you know, we didn't start with a massive stock of it. So six remaining. They'll be back. 
It depends if you, you know, if you're happy to wait, that's fine. I'm never happy to wait. I'll be honest. Uh, I'm a little impulsive. If I see something and I have to have it, uh, then, you know, I have to have it. Um, especially if I've got a project there ready to go. And I, I've got about six projects on the go always. So, you know, yeah. Now, um, producer Hannah, I would imagine this is probably a bundle that you love. This would go in producer Hannah's house. Um, but you wouldn't use all of them necessarily all in, at one go. This is one that is a lovely mixer to have through. Maybe you're working with some florals and you want to um, bring through highlights, uh, you know, some of the yellows from those florals, uh, or maybe you just want to tone something down or, or just add a little bit. This has got um, bright tones, uh, dusky tones. It's got a full range in there. It's, it's ever so lovely. You've got in here carrot. Oh, this is the really tasty sounding one as well. You've got carrot cake. That's your arrow carrot cake. There. Arrow carrot cake. You've got your daffodil bloom. Um, you've got your yellow ochre. Uh, you've also got uh, your mustard. You've got your mellow yellow and you've got your fresh apricot. They are your colors in there. 29.49. What? We have 15 of these bundles in the company until the reorder comes through. Do we know when that's due to land? No. OK, good. Um, so if you are after this today, we don't know when it's going to be back. into. It will be back into, but we don't know exactly when. Um, I think just because we were blown away by the response for this. We, you know, we, we thought we'd bought enough stock. Um, and it turns out, no. <laughs> I'll be honest, turns out, no. You loved it uh, more than we had even anticipated. You, you surpassed our expectations, which is absolutely fine. Uh, we will just get more next time. It's fine. Uh, 29.49. Fabulous. Uh, now, let's have a look at the next one. Now, the last one that I can offer you in the Bijou. Now, remember, the Bijou will be part of our core range when the, when the reorder goes through. Gosh, do you know what? It, it, it's um, the processes that have to happen. I mean, we, we come to wear and, and, uh, and, and we are, you know, John and I are, are like the swans. And, uh, and the rest of the company are frantically paddling to keep up with, with everything that we do here. You know, when you absolutely love something, um, it's just, it's wonderful. Uh, but but the, everything that has to happen behind the scenes to make all of this happen, we have a wonderful team working incredibly hard. So um, I always want to give them their credit where credit is due there. You know, they do work incredibly hard to bring these all to air for us. So, and also to put these bundles together, you know, that's a skill and an art in itself. So this one here, again, you've got your different range of ditsies, and this is your blush. I could, I, you know, I could, I could do it. You know, this um, facial contouring with makeup is a thing, producer Hannah. I could do with this in a kind of a facial contouring thing, makeup. But this is your blush. Uh, so in here, you have got your peachy, your arrow peachy, which is that one. You've got your crimson, your bouquet crimson, which is that one. Uh, you've got your clover cotton candy, which is that one. You've got your or sweet potato. Oh, hang on, where's this? Oh, sweet potato, your pyramid sweet potato, which e that, that one. Uh, then you've got your grapefruit, pennant grapefruit, which is there. Uh, and then your petal Sedona, which must be that. No, hang on. Oh, one of these. Whichever one I haven't mentioned. There we go. So you've got all of those in there for 29.49, half a meter of each. That's three meters of fabric in there. And again, the, the joy of this is that tonally, you've got a couple of different tones in each of those. That'll last as well. If you're using these to mix through, so that's what, that's the equivalent of um, two fat quarters in each half meter. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 12 fat quarters, 12 fat quarter bundle for 29.49. <laughs> Producer Hannah says, you might not use it all in one go. You might not, but you might. You don't know. You just never know. You never know how people want to use their fabric. It's entirely, and we, you know, we're not here to judge, but we do like it when you post your picture so that we can see. Uh, now, the Bijou is a new staple rain fresh. Like I say, I, I will reiterate, we will get it back in to stock, but you did take us a bit by surprise by how much uh, you just 
went for it, absolutely went for it, which is brilliant. Um, now, if you are joining us for the first time, we have new people joining us all the time, finding us. It amazes me that people often find our fan page on Facebook before they actually find us and go, what are we now a fan of? Us, here. Uh, the things that we do here, the sewing, the, the, you know, the guests, the, the wonderful things that we make. But if you are putting your order in for the first time, and obviously we are a shopping channel, that's, that's how we can bring you all of these things, is, is when you buy from us. So here is your free rotary cutter for people who are brand new to us the first time that you purchase we will send you if you spend over 10 pounds not including your pmp uh this rotary cutter with all of these blades you don't have to put in a code you don't have to do anything it just comes to you from us as a hey welcome to sewing quarter thank you for joining us type thing there you go now a new range to us this isn't going to be a staple it's just you know Passing through is our new Ditsy print in the Titan range. Now, um, the Blue Bijou is one that we can't offer at the moment because it's out of stock. It will come back in, but my word, it flew. Blues are always so popular. Now, you are getting two and a half meters in this bundle, so a half a meter of each. And again, uh, back to these small Ditsies. And here, you've got all sorts of things going on. So a little more contemporary than the, the traditional bijou, but what a beautiful array of blues. I find blues very calming, really lovely. Um, and just, you know, something a little bit different here. And again, not a solid color in that background. There is texture within the background before you even get the ditzy on top of there. So again, it means that they blend beautifully through. Even if you can't match the color exactly, it doesn't, kind of doesn't matter because you've got those different tones to work through. Look at this one. It looks like crazy thumbprints, but in dots, it's, it's, it's bizarre, but it kind of, I love it. And then you've got these little ones. So that is your option, 34.49. You're getting two and a half meters P-O-G-C-99, yes. <laughs> oh, uh, producer Hannah, I'm not fussy. Don't, 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 don't. I'm happy for anything. <laughs> we're, we're having a little party after, just, just so that you know what's happening right now. They're taking our order. We're, we're, having, we're being treated to lunch by the company. Is, is there any particular flavour of pizza that I want? I know I'm really happy to go with anything, Patricia Hannah. I, I'm, um, yeah, the morning sickness is passing, so I can eat anything now. Happy days. Thank you. <laughs> you all needed to know this. Very, oh, I'm feeling really hungry now. Oh, oh it's the 11 o'clock hour. Of course I'm hungry. Uh, no, but thank you for that. I'm, I'm happy with anything. I'm, I'm really not fussy. Which might surprise some of you, but when it comes down to food, really not fussy. Oh, how lovely! I've forgotten that. We are um, we're celebrating St Patrick's Day, aren't we? After after, so uh, how how appropriate <laughs> that we move on to the greens. <laughs> this is the green fabric. Yes, we interrupt this broadcast to uh, give you details of my lunch. Uh, <laughs> Thirty-four forty-nine. It's important. It's important. Um, Oh, I'm being well fed today, aren't we, Hannah? Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you did get lunch and breakfast. Um, I brought eggs in from my chickens this morning, and we all had fried egg sandwiches. It was very tasty. Um, again, this is the Titan range. This isn't a core range. So if you see this and you love this, uh, then it is a matter of buying this now, because this isn't going to be one that we restock. It's just one that's, you know, passing through, and uh, we'll have it for a bit, and then it'll go, and then we'll bring in something new, and, you know, because we can. That's how it works. I'm really taken with this one. I keep, my eye keeps being drawn to this because it's a bit different. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, and then this. This reminds me of um, A-level biology. when you had, you, I was really rubbish with the slide work that you used to have to do under the, mi under the microscope. And that kind of reminds me of, of looking under the microscope, all those little things. Um, and uh, people see different things. Somebody else will see... Oh, these look like bird tracks. Oh, your dad thought he had a penguin in, in his garden when it snowed. Ah, 
I tell you what, though, producer Hannah, it is amazing the amount of wildlife that it was. That I was really staggered by all the different all the different footmarks in in our garden. You know, birds and stuff, not like general public traipsing through. Uh, I'd just like to say because that would be weird. Um, yeah, it does look like little uh, little tracks. Oh, we've got we've got a Mr. and Mrs. Duck that have decided for some reason to come and build a nest in our garden. Nowhere near any water, just in our garden. I'm going to have to really look after them. Maybe they do like that. They sound like horseshoes, aren't they? Oh, donkey shoes. Oh, yeah, no, my donkeys don't wear shoes. No, not Gert and Daisy. They don't do anything. They're quite lazy. They've got their donkey palace. They just like to stay in the donkey palace, really. They have the option. They've got lovely big fields and stuff, but they're a bit like, nah, we're Mediterranean. It's a bit wintry, not bothering. We're going to stay in and have a duvet day. That's what goes on in the life of, of the McCarty donkeys. Uh, <laughs> and then this one kind of feels a bit modern. It's almost like... Um, I feel like it's a city at night. You know, you start getting people's lights coming on. But that's what I see. But then I also see tiles. What do you quite like to do, Patricia Hannah? Oh, from a bird's eye of view. Oh, yes. So you get the different fields and different layouts of cities. You know, in America, and it's all like grids, isn't it? And then you come to England, and it's all higgledy-piggledy all over the place. This is more like an American street layout. Unless, of course, it's Milton Keynes, in which case it's just a whole load of roundabouts. Actually, Peterborough was a bit like that when I was there, too. Uh, but here we go. Maybe this is Peterborough with your roundabouts. <laughs> America, Peterborough, and, and uh, Milton Keynes. There we go. Uh, <laughs> we've solved the map issue. Uh, so that's 3449 PPGC06, and that's your Titan Moss fabric bundle. Beautiful, soft greens. Mix them through with your florals. Gorgeous. Before we move on... Oh, OK, before we move on, the Bijou Berry Bundle. Ba, 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 ba. We, um, we don't have a load of this. We're down to the last three before the next lot comes in. It's on order. I don't really know how long these things take, because there's a process, isn't it? You know, it might arrive at the warehouse, but it might not be checked in straight away, because they might be busy cutting your fabric. Um, you know, they're very busy in our warehouse. We've got lots to do. So, um, or it might just be that it, it takes the, the supplier a while to get. You know, we don't know. I don't know. Uh, but it is on reorder. But for now, we only have three of these bundles left in the company. It will come back. But if you need this now, 29.49. Award wing director, Maya, I can hear him saying, I need it now. Yes. Yes. Oh, and the yellow one, yes. Oh, the yellow one's down to eight. Oh, this, you see, again, very, very popular range. Lots of you going for this. Um, this, this has been joyful that this is becoming part of the staple collection because it is, it is a softer tone. It, it is, it's bringing a whole new range of tonal palettes through. And, um, you know, we, we do have the linear, we do have the linen look fabrics, um, and we do have our, our, our spectrum solids. But this is lovely. This is to bring a new element of ditzies and, um, and, and something, you know, a little bit different. They're not all floral ditzies. We've got little arrows going on there. Because little squares going on there. So that it's not, it's, it's very usable. Really useful. Right. Ah, now. I um, overheard a little conversation in the office. It's all open plan. Um, I over... <laughs> Bridget Hannah's really worried now. She's like, are you about to quote me? It's all right, Hannah, you weren't there. You were at lunch. It's fine. Um, and... <laughs> Are we always eating here? We might be. And then I wonder why I balloon. Um, anyway, uh, and the conversation was, is there any chance of getting the Devon County fabrics back? Because we've loved it. Uh, it it's been absolutely beautiful. You've loved it. We've, lo we've all loved it. Uh, we've all absolutely loved it. Um, and the answer, in short, because I won't repeat the whole conversation because it's boring, uh, was no, <laughs> sadly. We are not able to get the Devon County fabrics again. So we have got five left of the full shebang, otherwise known as the full collection bundle. We have each of these 
by the half meter in this bundle. We have some available by the half meter, but because some have sold out, we can't rebundle the whole the whole lot again, the whole collection again, because some have sold out, so it's just not possible. We can't get it again. Da -da 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 -da. Um, if I uh, you might not even want to know all of the workings of how it works at Stone Quarter, but if I just explain to you why we get to these points, and hopefully you'll understand where, why we are where we are with it. Um, so we can't get it again. We've loved it. You've loved it. Everybody's loved it. Um, but we just can't get it again. Um, and so we've got five of these complete bundles. Why are you laughing at me, Producer Hannah? Oh, producer Hannah's counting. Oh, she's working out how many fat quarters. You always like to know a fat quarter, don't you? Just double it. Just oh, oh no, okay. If you're getting um, 44 fat quarters, just times it by four. Times the meterage by four, and you're there, producer Hannah. That's it. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Put that over there. So 11 meters. That is. 22 half, different half meters. If you're producer Hannah, that's the equivalent of 44. Uh, <laughs> that took you far too long to work that out. <laughs> Brilliant. Is there one tucked underneath the blue one at the bottom? Oh, I, do you know what I did that last time as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's not that I don't like it. It's clearly, yeah, I'll put it on the top then. We can, we, we can all focus on it. Um, here they are. Now. The history of this collection. Um, Devon County uh, was inspired by a beautiful mariner's quilt that is up in York at the Quilters Guild. Absolutely stunning if you want to go and have a look at it. Now, the designer of this fabric is... Oh, can you not just go in? Oh, it used to be open, but it's booked appointments now. John went, didn't they, and they, they, they wouldn't let him touch it. You have to wear gloves and everything. It's like being in a museum. Uh, but I mean, the quilt is, is, you know, well over 100 years old, so that's absolutely fine. So these are the Quilters Guild of the British Isles. Um, we're, we're learning about all these things. It's wonderful. Uh, this is heritage, isn't it? This is, this is beautiful. This is history. So um, the designer of this fabric was, was very much influenced by this quilt that, that she had seen. She loves to put a slightly modern twist on traditional fabrics. She's very influenced by Victorian and Edwardian fabrics. She loves those colorways. She loves the designs of those. So she's kind of recreate them in her own very special way. Um, now, the names of them, because we will go through these, if I just say we've got Annie, We've got Blue Robin, Brown Dorothy, Catherine, Christine, Donald, Fawn, Heather, James, uh, Jane, Lois, Margaret, Mark, Mary, Matthew, Pink, Kimberly, Purple, Audrey, Red Ribbon, Susan, William, Yellow, Audrey, and Yellow, Kimberly. Um, it might not be entirely evident which one is which. And that's absolutely fine. And the reason for that is each of these fabrics is named after either um, one of the people that originally made the quilt that this was inspired by, or, oh, there you go, that is the original Mariner's quilt. How utterly stunning. Now, this is the quilt that has inspired these fabrics. Just beautiful. And then what they've done at the end of this little clip is laid out all of the new fabrics so you can see how they compare and contrast. Look at that. It's a thing. There you go. And they've, oh, I hope they did that with gloves. Isn't that beautiful? So that's, that's the Devon County range next to the original ones. And you can really see how, close, how closely she's followed there to maintain that authenticity. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I've not seen that before, producer Hannah. No, I don't know where you've just dug that up from, but thank you, that's, that's brilliant. It's amazing what you can find when you have a good old rummage around, isn't it? You've got everything at your fingertips there. Um, she's good, isn't she? Um, and so, but it's lovely because it's, I mean, I'd seen pictures of the quilt, but I'd not seen that direct comparison between the original fabrics in the quilt and what the designer, how closely she, she stuck to it, which is, which is just exquisite. Really beautiful, really beautiful. So all named after either people who created the Mariner's Quilt in the first place or 
people whose um, efforts went to bring this range and bring this range to life. I love that. I mean, it makes my job impossible in terms of telling you which one's which, but... <laughs> I like, I like that. I like that story. That's gorgeous. So if you would like a half a meter of each of these, and then you've got the whole kit ready to go. And if you wanted to, you, you know, if you wanted to, then you can mix through your bijoux as well, because tonally they work. And we'll show you that in just a minute. Um, and then that is 186 pounds and 99 pence, but you've got the lot. Wendy in Leicestershire says, hi, Natasha. Love the new fabrics. Another lovely show. Love Wendy. Wendy, thank you. Lovely. Oh, Leicestershire. I lived in Leicestershire for a while. Hmm. Now, right. Some of these we do have by the half meters. Other, obviously, we don't. They've sold out completely, which is why we only have five of this complete bundle left in the building, and we can't make any more bundles. As much as we would absolutely love to, we can't. So, uh, producer Hannah, let's just start at the top and work our way down. Do we have that? Uh, 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 by the half meter. Do we, do we, do we? Brown Dorothy. <laughs> so I told you, it wasn't necessarily instantly recognizable. We have, we have a winner. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, we do have this by the half meter. If you would like Brown Dorothy by the half. It's not the most flattering name, is it? let's be honest. If I were Dorothy, I'd have been like, couldn't I have been pink Dorothy or something? Did I have to be brown Dorothy? Uh, <laughs> of course it had to be where we started. Then that's £8.50. Oh dear, so immature. Um, then MPQX20, that's £8.50 by the half metre. Hey, look, this is a really useful, uh, a useful fabric. You've got your ochres in there, you've got pinks, you've got browns, brown Dorothy. Uh, you've also got creams in there as well. So actually, as a blender, as a mixer, a really useful one. Or, you know, get yourself your brown Dorothy today. £8.50, there we go. Let's, let's move over to one side. I'm going to go down this side and work my way back up. Um, <sighs> producer Hannah's just going to shout names at me. It's fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, this one, well, I've never really worked out what this pattern is. Does anybody know what it is? Sometimes I think it looks like some kind of winged thing, and then I don't know. Maybe it's like feathers in the wind or so. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I quite like the fact that I see something different every time I look at it. Which one's this, producer Hannah? Oh, only available in bundles, it doesn't matter anyway, there we go. Okay. Uh, right, so let's put that there. What about this? I'm... Oh, purple Audrey. Purple Audrey. So we have explained the reason as to why these all have people's names. Um, I don't think her real name was purple Audrey. I think it was just Audrey, and then it happened to just be that it was purple. Um, but, oh, yeah, because there's a yellow Audrey. That's why, that's why. Just to, just to distinguish. So Audrey must be very important because you've got two colours. Um, so there's your £8.50 for your purple Audrey. And I like the fact that you've got a, a textured background there as well. So it's not hard, a hard colour, it's, it's soft. You've got the lovely creams in there as well. Very beautiful. Now, there is a half metre of this in the full bundle, but if you want it by the half metre, we only have 15 metres of this available by the half meter outside of this bundle. Uh, and we only have five of these. Um, I, I kind of feel this is a, a miss it, miss out situation because that won't be back. Once that 15 meters is gone, it's gone. Bye bye purple Audrey. Oh, that sounds sad. Bye bye purple Audrey. Now, which, oh, do you want to go yellow Audrey? Yeah, because I've got yellow Audrey over here. And then that's 15 meters, oh, well, there you go. You've bought exactly the same of both. So uh, there you go. That's your yellow Audrey. Yeah, you see, if you've bought the, um, if you, would you like that in the bedroom as a, as a, as a block, in a blind? Oh, nice. Very nice, yeah. Drapes or something nice. Uh, but £8.50. Oh, you want a Roman blind out of it, do you, produce Hannah? Uh, I don't know, I can't remember. I've got it, I've got it in my book. Oh, oh, uh, director Mike says yes. So he'd like, uh, she'd like that in a, in a Roman blind. I'm not quite sure. Um, oh, Hannah, I've, I've, I've hidden another one. Just found another one. Yeah, nice. Uh, well, let's do this one then next. 
Uh, this one always looks like holly leaves to me, but then with a spot. And who's this? Jane. Oh, this is Jane. Oh, James. Hi, James. Uh, this is James. Oh, only seven meters of James. You know, he's not going to go. He's not going to go around all of us, is he? Just seven meters of James. Let, 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 again, that sounds wrong. Um, oh, they've got the names on the selfie. Well, that means I've got to unravel them all. But if you do have it at home and you're wondering which one's which and you want to reorder some more before it all goes. Oh, if you know someone called James. Yeah, you do. You get the sell. You get, okay, I see what you're going with that. Producer Hannah. Let me hang on. Let me find James on the salvage. Freddie's middle name is James. My brother's middle name is James. My maiden name was Hunt. You see, and my my brother was born in '76, and uh, and they couldn't really. They wanted to call him James, but of course James Hunt had won the motor racing, so they thought it'd be a bit weird. So there you go. Would you would you buy that just if that had Hannah on it? Would you? Nice. Yeah. Hannah, it says, I am that person. I am that person that wants my personalised fabric. Well, good on you. Why not? Um, right, I'm going to try and be a little bit more organised now about how I go through these. So we don't have that one. We've got that one. What about this one? Now, this is, I like this one. This is Jane with a Y. Oh, that's important. Jane with a Y. Oh, they remind uh, producer Hannah of the 1950s Christmas lights. My mum still has those on her tree. I think we got we inherited them from my grandma. She's got and she's also got sort of coaches in in light for it's amazing. Um, very much back in fashion, happily. If you wait long enough, everything does. Uh, this will never go out of fashion because it's traditional, which is perfect. Um, and just interesting. You don't often see things like this, do you? So a beautiful quality of prints to get those little dots. But then, do you know what? From the Quilters Guild, you want, you want that. You want that lovely quality. £8.50 for your Devon County Jane fabric. RZQX05. Next one. Now, you see, this reminds me. It's got sort of a, a classical bent to it on this one. See, when I can't sleep, I, I watch sort of history documentaries. I've been learning all about the Greeks and the Romans. And I feel that's got a classical, a classical mark on it. What's this one called? Heather. And yet there's kind of, you say, I'd have called purple Audrey Heather. Oh, yes, of course. So producer Hannah makes a very good point. She said that back in the day when the Mariner's Court, which all of these are based on, um, was created, they didn't have dedicated quilting weight fabrics. All of the fabric would have been made from old clothes, things like that. Um, it, I mean, the queens of upcycling, weren't they? These, these women that made these quilts, absolutely stunning. So this would have been either someone's dress or shirt or something like that, chopped up and whacked in a quilt. But now we have it as a quilting weight. Do you know what? Quilting fabrics have come so far just in the last 10 years. It's amazing. You know, the dedicated quilting weight fabrics. Oh, oh, I feel a history lesson coming on here. So um, young girls would use up all these scraps of, of old fabric and create, and of course, they'd have been sort of piecing together by hand, um, a beautiful quilt, which they'd then stick in their bottom drawer ready for when they got married. What if they never got married? Would they be allowed to use it? Just, would they be allowed to use it on a cold night before they got married? Yeah, traditionally, that bottom drawer... So you do, yeah, you do collect your bottom drawer, don't you? You think for your bottom drawer. Do people still do that? Do you, oh, produce Anna did one for herself. There you go. Before she moved out, she started, not, not for when she got married, but just for when she actually moved out. I think that is the new thing, isn't it? It's not necessarily that you move out to get married. You move out to, to you know, spread your wings. No, it is expensive to get all these things. So... A quilt, these are heirlooms. This is, this is and, and originally they would have been, you know, they would have been passed down from generation to generation. Um, and, and that's what we have here. Oh, this is Blue Robin, by the way, just whilst we're, whilst we're talking about this. Um, but the detail in there. You see, I wonder if that was a broom. And then it's, and then it's a leaf. And then it, it's just all sorts. And then you've got lovely spots in there as well. 
very lovely fabric. I wonder, you see, now I, I want to know, was this a dress? Was this a skirt? What was this? Uh, we might never know. Well, we probably won't ever know. But I wonder who had an outfit out of, out of Blue Robin and what this was as well. Because when I look at this from different directions, you know, sometimes I think it's a Christmas tree, but it's upside down for, for, for a Christmas tree. Oh, this is Donald Duck or just Donald? Just Donald. What else could it be? Or maybe it, it looks like a, um, could it look like the top of a thistle? Like the, the flower at the top of a thistle? Could anybody else see that? Come away from the Christmas tree. Oh, but she's handy, she likes colours, she doesn't care what it is, she likes colour. That's Donald, and he is available by the half... He? The fabric is available by the half metre. Now, this could be very modern. It's going to sit very nicely, like when we bought the Dashwood Altitude range, and that was all mountainous, wasn't it? But even just that with solids, you could do that as, as kind of a monochrome thing, couldn't you? Throw that in as a monochrome Oh, there's only six metres of Christine. It's like she's been to Weight Watchers. Only six metres of Christine left. £8.50. Fab. No, it's a good one, isn't it? Very good. It's interesting. Now, uh, producer Hannah has this one. Yes, just so you know. Just for cushions, just because she likes it a lot. Uh, now, this is... Now, did... It was Mark. There we go. Uh, well, you don't, it wasn't the name, it was the colours that you went for, was it? Uh, so she doesn't have anyone called Mark. Uh, so, uh, so she did like it. She bought it just for the fabric. Oh, producer Hannah saw this on a, on a stool. Um, on the Quilters Guild stool at the Festival of Quilts. And you've wanted it since then. And they only sell fat quarters. Well, that's not going to do a stool, is it? So when it came in, producer Hannah had to go crazy and get a metre. Uh, producer Hannah, how many fat quarters in a metre? Four, yeah, there we go. There you go. You, you're on it now, aren't you? Maths is a-flowing from you now. Uh, £8.50 for your Devon County Mark fabric. Stunning. It's interesting. It's a really interesting one with the lattices and the lines and everything else. Oh, no, I think contemporary, but, you know, lovely. Uh, the, this one, is this a mouse on wheels? That, this is Mary. That's what I'm seeing. Um, or, or could, we've got lots of Marys that watch, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, maybe it's one of those 1970s ham and pineapple. Uh, it doesn't have to be. I, I know, but I like I like to envisage things. It might be a scary insight into how my mind works, but never mind. Um, but just an interest. Again, another interesting print. Oh, there's only four meters of Mary. Eight pound fifty, and only four meters of Mary left. It is a bit miss it, miss out, isn't it? But, you know, that's how it is, I'm afraid. That's, that's life. Now, this one reminds me a bit of Mark. Oh, this is Matthew. Oh, we've got all biblical. Have we got Luke and John as well? No. Okay. Just Matthew and Mark. This is Matthew. This is £8.50. Well, we like. Again, what was that? What, what do you think that... What, what do you think dressmaking that was? Oh, producer Hannah, you give me all your history. No, I want more. I want to know more. It is intriguing. I want to know. Oh, I love a bit of history. Um, that's why my geography is so dreadful, because I chose history over geography. Right, so, uh, so far, it's, uh, that one we haven't got. We've gone into brown Dorothy there. We, um, this one, what about this one? What do we reckon this one is? Now this is a, this is Catherine. Catherine is um, a lovely maroon and cream. It would go nicely with a blush bundle. I tell you other collections that it would go really beautifully with. If you've got any Tim Holtz, I think that would go beautifully with a spot of Tim Holtz too. So, but we don't have any Tim Holtz, but we do have the blush bundle. Oh, blimey, I'm not going to be able to do that for much longer, am I? Uh, here we go. So just for your perusal, 
one blush bundle. Dee -dee -dee -dee. There we go. One blush bundle and Catherine. Happy days. So you see, if you don't have a spare 180 something pounds for the whole, the whole um, Devon County shebang, then you might want to just go bijou and a little, a little snippet of your Devon County. And that's all okay too. You might have an absolute favorite one. Some of my favorites are coming up in just a minute. Yeah, they are, yeah. Yeah, I know we've covered yours already. This is the nice thing. That's why I like working with you, Bridget Hannah, because we are very different in our taste in fabric. And, uh, and I think that we, um, you know, that's a good thing. Yeah, it is interesting what other people like and think about. Yes. Oh, I'm with you. She says, you know, it's, it's, it's the same with our Facebook fan page uh, in terms of you get to see what other people, just amazing things that people come up with with different fabrics, different fabrics that, you know, maybe you've got, but you hadn't thought of quite doing that with it. And then you're like, oh, yeah, well, why didn't I think of that? Amazing. So all about that personal choice. This is one of my favorites. I like this one. Oh, this is Annie. We're very limited on Annie. I like that she's got that shabby chic feel. Um, and I like the texture in the background. I like the little floral. Again, I could see myself English paper piecing a little bit of that. Um, and £8.50 for a half meter of Annie. And also just the fact that it's, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful, just a beautiful color. And actually, here's the thing with Annie. Would you never pick Annie? It's just, but even if you put Annie with, with some of the yellows, it's just, it's just not your thing. But you see, then I might not have gone for Matthew or Mark. And that's fine too. But the whole collection, yeah, if you get the whole collection, then it, you know, it all just works so beautifully together. But this is the beauty of being able to offer it by the half meter as well. I'm going to move Annie over to here because I want you to see how fabulously Annie goes with all of our bijous. Oh, just so that you know, the Berry Bijou, this one here. Oh, it's sold out. But I'll just show you, if you have bought the Berry Bijou, look how beautifully she goes with that, because you like that color was exact, gorgeous. Um, but then if we look down here, then suddenly, I'll get rid of Berry Bijou then. Um, that clears a bit of space, doesn't it? But if anybody does want anything compared, then just message in and I can always bring it back again. Um, so you see, look, suddenly that's a completely different feel, isn't it? And then up here, this one with the blush, suddenly you're bringing out different colors. And the, this is a brilliant. Suddenly you're mixing these with your plate and it's just fabulous. I like it. That's why it's a handy fabric to have. You see, that's why I like her. Good old Annie. Uh, we have dealt with whoever that one was. James, and we've also dealt with yellow uh, Audrey. What about this? What's this green one? Because this one always intrigues me. Again, it, I'm not really sure what it is. This is William. Are these oak leaves? Oh, that's one of your favorite names. Oh, I've got to start thinking about names. It's really tricky. Do you reckon they could be oak leaves? Maybe. They do look like oak leaves, don't they? It's not just my imagination. With sort of back to front question marks but like really curly question marks. And that's £8.50 for a half a metre of William. Right, next one. Here we go. Oh, you see, this is another one that I like too. And you've got this in two different colours. Um, but I don't know what her name is. We've got Kimberly. So this is yellow Kimberly. And we've got pink Kimberly too. So... Yellow Kimberly has been very, very, very popular. We've got, uh, well, we haven't got very much, basically. Patricia <laughs> Hannah's tried to confuse me. She said, we've got under 10 minutes of this. Well, yeah, we're not going to sit on it for 10 minutes. What she meant was 10 meters, and we've got less than 10 minutes on the show. But lots of tens, lots of tens. But you know, I understood all of those messages combined into one. That's like streamlining information for me there, producer Hannah. <laughs> Even if award-winning director Mike is a bit confused. Uh, £8.50 there for your Devon County yellow Kimberly fabric. 
There it is. Now, this is going to work with your yellow bundle, isn't it? You know, yes. Yeah, well, let's, why not? Let's go for it. There we go. Perfect. Sits in there a treat. Actually, whilst I'm there, I might throw in yellow Dorothy too. Yeah, I know, craziness, craziness. Yeah. So, yellow Dorothy is going to go down the bottom. Oh, it's yellow Audrey. Oh, oh, uh, do you know what it's because? We've got another version of brown Audrey, uh, brown Dorothy in another colour. Uh, so it won't be brown anything. Uh, and then this is um, yellow Kimberly. And then that's obviously your bijou yellow. It's brilliant. I like to play with these things. Bijou yellow bundle coming up as we speak. There we go. Or not. Oh, no, there we go. That's your bijou tonal. Yellow, fab. Right. There's how many? Less than, hang on, less than four of, what, of the yellows. Oh, gosh. Wow, okay, you've been, going, you've been going for that one then. Good on you. Good on you. Enjoy yourself. Now, uh, this is Dorothy. What colour Dorothy is this, producer Hannah? Had you not, yeah, you see, very different to brown Dorothy. It is one that, that sort of falls to the background sometimes, but I think, look, you've got those heathers, those soft heathers and purples and pinks through there. You could put that with the blush beautifully. Do you want to see it with the blush? Come on. Doesn't this one suddenly work beautifully when you put it with a blush? It softens it somehow because all of a sudden it's bringing out all these different colours. So all of these, all of these different tones that were sort of a little bit to the back, suddenly coming out and really enjoying that blush. I like those together a lot. It might work with the yellow. Can I try it with the yellow as well? Yep. Good. Here we go. Uh, look, 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 because then, completely different look, doesn't it? Completely different. Handy fabric to have in your stash. Who would have thought that these would have acted as blenders? But it, it's amazing. So, I mean, imagine if, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of, uh, out of the blush. Yeah, sorry about this. Um, just to, uh, what if you only put in, if you just did, if you, if you did that as a trim, and then you'd bring out those, and look, different again. I like this. Maybe you've gone for the blush and the yellow. Treat yourself. And, uh, and then you can, you can pop a bit, of, uh, a bit of fawn Dorothy in there, just because you can. Oh, now this is another of my favourites coming up, producer Hannah. Yeah, I know, I know. This one here. Uh, I think because it sort of reminds me of a peacock feather, and I really like peacock feathers. Uh, like an upside down one, if I'm feeling it like that, there you go. Or a pond in the corner of the room. Is that what you see, producer Hannah? Wow, people do see different things, don't they? But put this with your Titan blues, shall we? Yes, let's. Uh, we'll, we'll get the name for this one in a minute, but I just, I just want you to see this with your Titan Blues. Again, the Titan is not going to be core range. It is Susan. But look at Susan over here with Titan. Titan and Susan. <laughs> they make a beautiful couple, let me tell you. I really enjoy that. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Very nice. Some obviously, like that one you might not use because it's got white background, so we could ignore that. But I, so, I like that bluey tone. You see, I would use it with that. That's where I would go with that, with the horseshoe funny one. Because then you've, you've picked out that tone of blue. Nice. And then it looks like, you know, um, some people when, they, when you look at them and they've got twinkly blue eyes, that's what that then reminds me of. Just like you, producer Hannah. 
with your twinkly blue eyes. <laughs> Award-winning director Mike says, have you got blue eyes? Yes, she has. She's got lovely eyes. Very blue eyes, but she's got her glasses on, so they're not that prevalent at the moment. Uh, now, what... Um, here we go. Uh, oh, no, I've forgotten which one this one is. And this is another one that I really, really, really like. And works beautifully with the blush. What was her name? Kimberly. Oh, that's right, we had yellow Kimberly. This is going to be pink Kimberly. Oh, uh, we've only got uh, pink Kimberly, five metres of her. Again, very lovely. Hang on, they're talking about Power Rangers upstairs. What's going on with Power Rangers? Kimberly was the pink Power Ranger. I very much doubt that this fabric was named after a pink Power Ranger. I'm throwing it out there. I'd love to be proved wrong, but I suspect possibly not. And yes, producer Hannah, I wasn't allowed to watch uh, Power Rangers either. It was a bit too scary. I wasn't allowed to watch Grange Hill either, in case that scared me. I was only like four at the time, to be fair, but yeah. <laughs> Grange Hill, big no-no. I wasn't allowed to watch EastEnders either until I was about 15. Um, here we go. It is a bit aztec isn't it? And actually, I was really surprised to see such a similar one in, in the original fabrics that these were, were based upon. Because I really thought this must have been one of the more modern ones that they sort of put in. But no, true to form. This is Margaret. It does feel really strange giving them people's names. Quite personal. Hi, Margaret. And then the last one. Uh, this is producer Hannah's, another of her favourites. Here we go. What's this one called? Red Robin. Oh, oh, okay, so we have Blue Robin, and now we've got Red Robin. Producer Hannah, did you put out extra food for your birds during that cold snap? No, okay, I did. You don't feed your birds? Oh... Uh, uh, yeah, you see, next door's cats, no good. Uh, so, £8.50 for your Devon County Red Robin. Yeah, you see, my, my, my birds, I get lots of different birds in my, in my garden, and I think it's because they eat up the, what the chickens don't bother to eat up. They come and eat up after that. So it's really nice, we got pheasants and ducks. Oh, and a big buzzard came in the other day. My word, he was a big beast. Uh, there you go, that is your um, Red Robin. Now, that is the Devon County Fabric Collection. If you'd like the full band bundle, and um, again, because we're missing one of these fabrics, we can't bring you the full bundle ever again, which is very sad. I'm covered in fabric here. We're now down to what? Two of these, oh my word. Uh, so when they've gone, they have gone. If you are watching on Sky, then, um, and you're watching a repeat, and you want this, just give us a call. 0800 112 4433. Always ring to check quantities because you never know if something's bounced back out of somebody's basket. So this could be the last time ever that we bring you this bundle, this complete range. And this is every half meter of the Devon County collection, 22 different fabrics, each half meter each. Um, and that's 186.99 pence. Now. This fantastic bundle that we showed you today, you've been admiring it behind us in quilt form all week. And we were so privileged to have been able to have this kit made specially for us here at Sewing Quarter, which is just lovely. Um, oh, it's a European exclusive. Do you know what? The more we find out about this, it's a European exclusive bundle just for us. Woo, woo, feeling very special. Um, this is a Jen Kingwell design. She's a, a fantastic um, Australian designer, and you get everything that you need. Just add thread, scissors, and your time. If you wish to machine sew this, you can. If you wish to English paper piece it, you can. You get instructions for both and the capability for both in this kit. Lucy said she'd do a hybrid and do half and half, interesting. You've got London Lawn Fabrics in there, it's absolutely stunning, Rewatch the show, check it out, make sure you don't miss out on this. Let's have a look at tomorrow, coming up tomorrow, Vicky's in, lovely Vicky, 8 a.m., Jess gets gardening. Well, 
Yes, good. 9 a.m., quilt as you go show. The quilt as you go show. And then 10 a.m., uh, Jess's carry-all bag. Oh, I like Jess's carry-all bag. And then 11 a.m., must have gadgets. We do like a gadget. That is what's coming up tomorrow. Um, thank you, Vicky, for standing in. John's at the NEC. I'm there at the weekend. Have a lovely weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Spring is in full swing as we get gardening with Jess Entwistle this Friday, the 16th of March. Jess is here to show us how to make her gardening bag, Neela and Banner, first seen in Simply Sewing magazine. These handy outdoor makes are just what you need to get you in the mood to venture back into the great outdoors after a freezing winter. The gardening bag is perfect to store away your tools and comes with plenty of useful pockets for storage. The Neela has a good amount of padding to protect your knees and your clothes from the elements. And the banner brings an inspirational message into your home with embroidered letters on patterned linen. So make sure you join Jess as she talks us through her gardening collection on Friday the 16th of March at 8am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678.